This episode is sponsored by BetterHelp. Hello, hello, hello to you. Hello to everybody out there. Welcome, welcome, welcome to another, another, another episode of That One Piece Talk. What up? My name is Larry. Lawrence. Lionel. So. Um. And this is That One Piece Talk, <laughs> where we talk One Piece. Woo! I love anime. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> hello. What's going on, guys? How's everybody doing today? Uh, we're doing pretty good. Um, we're going to start this episode off with a very fast pace, um, just because we got some things to talk about. So for the agenda today, um, we're going to, you know, read off the names in chat. We're going to read some super chats because I know they're going to start flooding in. Also, we are going to talk about episode two of the One Piece live action. Uh, we didn't decide to watch it on camera. We actually watched it last night with each other. And we got some thoughts we want to share with you. And then we're going to go jump like straight into One Piece chapter 1092. So without further ado, uh, I do want to shout out to our thumbnail uh, from Monkey D Rock. And we are having no DDT this week, which means you have the break off. So we're going to have DDT most likely next week. It depends on Sebastian and his schedule. But other than that, I want to thank you again for just joining us. And also, listen, I'm trying to get to like, I'm trying to get like 500, maybe 600 likes mm. for the video. Mm. So if you mind helping us out and doing your boys some favors, we've never had a video that hit a thousand likes, I think, on uh, one of our episodes. I think we did. I'm not too sure, though. I, I wasn't paying attention. Yo, run up those likes if you can for us. It helps out. So Come thank on, you. Thank you. Not. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like the stream if you haven't already. Uh, we do have a lot of people in chat, so thank you guys for being here. Yes. Please hit that like button. Uh, but I see High Fly Guy, The Finesser, 80 Sphere, Nick Quavo. Uh, we can oh, read yeah. that. Uh, from mm. yeah, yeah. Straw Hat Nate, Monkey D Sauce, Brandon Wigfall, uh, him or the gym? I can't, I can't, I can't read that. Dipper, Blazer, Blazer, OG Lion, Play Dead. Uh, Karma, Miguel Rosales Portillo, Austin Hart, Mike Super, Twilight Straw Hat, Rio, Rio, uh, Muppets, Meeks, Kyrell, just so many. Uh, Crimson Tide, uh, Hime is in here. What's up, Hime? Toby, Young Lou, uh, so many of y'all in here. Appreciate y'all being here. If you haven't, please like the stream if you haven't already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Run up those likes. Thank you, thank you. Uh, what else we got? Live chat? Yeah, I we mean, have uh, a couple super chats sitting. Um, let's see, let's see. We got 20 gifted memberships <laughs> from James Hudson, man, a.k.a. James. Pig. Thank I hope you. you're doing well, man. Thank you, thank you. I feel like you. I haven't spoke to you in a little. Yeah, man. Good, good. Always good to hear from Pig, man. For those of y'all that are receiving these uh, memberships, please, W's in the chat for Pig. If you missed them, just, like, turn off your future site, bro. Like, <laughs> you gotta stop dodging them. Gotta stop dodging them. Yeah, we got another uh, membership subscription to Nakama Status from Salamander, not Salamander. Uh, thank you so much. That is, uh, you know, I think this is your first membership, so enjoy being a Nakama. Yes, thank you. We did you. get another six-month membership to Nakama Status from Play Dead. It says, sorry I'm late, guys, but we hear what it do. What, what it, it do? do? <laughs> what it do? What it do, baby? And another $10 super chat from Anthony Herrera. It says, just clocked out of Udon. <laughs> everyone, <laughs> everyone in this joint hockey is up. Let's go. <laughs> Yo, clocking in the Udon is crazy. Bro. Yeah, that sounds crazy. That's bro. Rough. Yeah. We got another seven from King SSD. It says, top three guys in Luffy's crew are the strongest in the whole crew, excluding Luffy, in their own terrain. Zoro on land, Sanji on air, Jinbei in water. Do you guys agree? Yeah, we had a whole conversation about this. Yeah. Yeah, we did. In regards to their epithets, uh, what they could be, or et cetera, like their mom's names and stuff mm -hmm. um, with Zoro and his lineage. But yeah, that's all the soups for now. Uh, we got one more. Oh, yeah, Lauren. Let me think of something. Uh, yeah, this is from um, last our last pod. Yeah. This is just so it was, uh, we were signing off and they super chatted. So I just want to read it to give a shout out to them. Uh, what's that, Senpai NFT? Yeah. 
Uh, heading um, headline: Supernovas take down Amro and CP agent CP zero agent. I think Luffy and Zoro end up two v twoing Kizaru and Luchi. I mean, they're kind of doing that now. I think he's saying that it'll be a two on two though. Yeah. So like, it'll be like where well, they're switching off. Maybe I don't, I don't know, but that could be the headline. I think. There's a lot that there's a lot that's gonna happen. Luchi, that Luchi don't got that, bro. He don't got <laughs> enough to be doing that. <laughs> We did get another uh, four-month membership to Nakama status from Anthony. It says, hashtag, stroppers, choppers, the strongest Toby Robo? Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> what? Is, what cho- I don't think Chopper would be the strongest Toby Robo. No, he wouldn't. I don't think so. I, th- I don't like, think he's beating like, him. In Kaido's? Yeah, like if he was there. No. No. No, 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 no. no. I think, I mean, if he ODs on pills, maybe. No. All, the ma- all the Mahaki users, choppers, not yet. I mean... Frankie's not a hockey user. He beat his. Toby Rope is, on it. But is Chopper stronger than Frankie? They, nah. You he's know, not, man. but they've he's shown not. the... What, wasn't Frankie struggling with Monster Chopper? Like, I remember that. Well, most that was a while ago, but I remember yeah, that. Yeah, that was like before all the upgrades and, he's the one that he and the not, radical light He knocked Monster yeah. Chopper no, in the order. this was in Puck Hazard. <laughs> nah, when they switched the body. Y'all remember that? He Am was in Chopper's body. body. Oh, yeah, I'm tripping. <laughs> I'm tripping, I'm tripping. My fault. Listen, Chopper gang, we got another <laughs> two from Blackheart Recording. It says, I took off for this episode. Thank <laughs> you. No way, man. There's no way. Thank you, no thank way. you. Thank you no for way. doing that. That's crazy. You could just pop an AirPod in and still listen in, bro. You don't yeah. got to take off work, but thank you. Yeah, we appreciate <laughs> that. That was yeah, his yeah. first Super Chat, too. Yeah, thank you. Uh, we got another five from Karma. It says, love y'all as always. Glad I'm back for another live. All I got to say is hashtag Buggy Gang and Larry do got the best takes. Blackbeard and Mihawk are frauds. <laughs> <laughs> uh, That's good. I don't know about, I don't know about all that, but word. Thank you. We got another five from Zai. It says, hey, y'all, you guys are the reason I got into One Piece. Oh, Absolutely wow. love the podcast. Thank Going you. to try and call in later. Y'all are genuinely inspirations. I can't believe that. That's crazy. Oh, wow. Honestly, Thank you, yo. That's, Thank you. that's such a nice yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. Seriously. That's one of our favorites. We yeah. get, actually get people to read one, watch and read One Piece yeah. that they yeah. weren't before. How do you stumble upon us without even being yeah. into One, one Piece, Piece at all? Yeah. That's well, kind of crazy. They, they probably saw us on like uh, social media. I hope you didn't watch and get spoiled because wow. Mm-hmm. Oh, he most definitely got spoiled. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 Like, we started in Wano, yeah, so like bro. that's a lot. Listen, yeah. <laughs> some people, some people need spoilers to get into stuff. Uh, we got another eight month membership from Nertaku. It says, uh, "Seb, stop wilding. People need to stop hating." On the One Piece live action. <laughs> so tune in for uh, in a little bit. Yeah. We got another two from Karma. It says also caught up on the pod, so we chilling. Hey, All right, okay, thank Karma. You. Thank you for catching up. Yeah, yeah, man. I had Karma working on a project for me. Hopefully, uh, he completed that. Uh, we got another. Okay. Two. <laughs> we got another two dollars from Project Iceman. It says we could have had Nika Sea King with that Goa Sea. King. Oh, he's probably saying the the sea king of the shore would have ate Luffy, hence becoming. Oh, <laughs> Is, that's the Goa Kingdom. Yeah. 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 A, no, no, no. That was, it's, yeah, it's, yeah, it was um, part of the Goa Kingdom. It was it was Fusha yeah. Village. Yeah. yeah I, I feel yeah. like they're kind of off. Whatever. Yeah. I yeah. don't know. I honestly don't know. I don't think they're part of the Goa Kingdom. I forgot. No, Goa Kingdom where Luffy grew up. Yeah. Yeah, yeah but I don't know remember, so Ace went to uh, Monaco, whatever his name is, to mm-hmm. learn how to. Be more proper to speech and manners. Mm-hmm. So Ace was in the Gold Kingdom, but he went to First Village. Yeah. So they probably, I, I forgot they're probably where close. Yeah, I forgot where it's at. But. Uh, if you were, tr- we got another nine or ten from Meeks. It says, if you were transported in the One Piece universe, what would be the worst place to be? Impel down or Udon? It's impel down, bro. Oh man, it's not even close. There are worse places to be. Are you talking? Are you crazy? I'll pick impel down over there. Um, Von Cobb's Kingdom any day. Yeah, though. well, he's, he's saying between those two. He uh, said those two. Those two no. specifically. He's talking about one piece in Wait, wait, I think he said Udon. Isn't that Kaido's? Udon, yeah. So, Impel Down is pretty bad, bro. Impel Down has like seven layers of terribleness. Of of torture. Honestly, it's going to sound like maybe, I don't, but like level six, they kind of just walk through all of them. If you you're gotta, strong enough, Impel yeah, Down is nothing. Seriously, yeah. If you're strong you enough. gotta be strong enough though. Let's, let's <laughs> believe it's gonna be nothing. It's gonna be nothing, man. Like no, 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 no. they took even no offense, but like even crocodile, they said took it with ease. Yo, are they and feed, crocodile are they, even they, like that? Are they even feeding you an impel down? Yeah. I don't 
I, I have never I seen, seen anybody have a meal. eating anything. And it fell down. At least you could work for food. And there was a heat in hands, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Queen be putting on shows and stuff. You know what I'm saying? And there's women You're going to be too. a test experiment with Queen. Yeah, you eating a smile for you might be able, You <laughs> might gain power, though. But you're going to nah. never stop laughing. Dude, I would never want to That's only if it doesn't work. I it's, could, a, it's a 10% chance it like works. Luffy survived yeah. lower odds. It's crazy. It's either you're a slave <laughs> or you're just in prison. They're both yeah. bad. They're both pretty bad. Yeah. I, I, ain't, I ain't choosing, definitely ain't choosing slave or prison. I ain't choosing none of that. I don't know. But, Sebastian, uh, we know you're going to get hungry. <laughs> <laughs> but there's an avenue you're for food like, and udon, is my point. Yo, but. There's no avenue for food. Are, They're not feeding you when it fell down, bro. They're feeding you small fruits. Yo, I'm definitely I, I not eating that. I laugh a lot no, anyway. No, 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 yeah, I'm not eating that. Those, I'm not eating those that. Those small things are there. Remember what Kid and Luffy were fighting got, for? Uh, yeah. No, nah, they're not feeding you that, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah the, you, you have, have to work. work for that. Yeah, you have the to work The more work you did, Luffy and K were like battling for that. And Sebastian up. not working for that. That's what I'm trying <laughs> to say, bro. It's not happening. I'm breaking out, bro. No matter what. Sure, bro. All right. He's going to be dancing with Queen. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm going to be a beast fire. I'm going to be a beast fire. Anyway, we got another two from Captain Coast. It says, Twins Yeti Cool Brothers cosplay when? That would be cool. Yeah, that, that would, would be, be pretty cool. dope. You get Fun it? I'm going to say that. You get it. Be cool. Ice cold. <laughs> <laughs> What's cool to me? Cool. <laughs> we got another five from Trav. It says, with Garp fighting Kuzan and Luffy fighting Kazaru, what are the chances of Dragon fighting a Kainu? I like that a little bit. Actually... I hope so. Is I thought of that, but that's like going to a new chapter. I pictured this. Mm -hmm. I pictured this dragon just punching. Dra uh, wow, dragon punching <laughs> the Kainu dead in his face, like hard. I just want to see him run, or, <laughs> or like lift his hand. Just above some sort his of head. physical activity. Yeah, I just want to see him catch a baseball. Like do something, bro. Catch a baseball, bro. Like I, at this point, that's, that's all I'm that's asking for. That's a little for. too specific, bro. <laughs> <laughs> it was I know he's like, hey, Luffy. With Luffy, <laughs> like, Luffy, like go a, deep. <laughs> <laughs> oh, like just man. take off your clothes, yeah, bro. Like, that's, <laughs> that's all I'm looking forward to at this point. <laughs> in walk hard when he was playing catch all his kids. <laughs> Anyway, we That's got funny. another two from Ryanosuke. It says, yo, what's good, Nakamura? Yeah, what's up, on, Ryanosuke? Ryanosuke? How are you, bro? So, hope you got that pick working, bro. We got it's another up. 10 from Mahoud, Mahmoud Fahoud. It says, I've been following your shorts for a while now. I have a theory about rocks that could explain why both Garp and Roger theoretically teamed up to take him down. Going to try to call in to explain. Yeah, looking forward oh, yeah. to it. Yeah, yeah. call in, man. We got another five from Karma. It says, haven't found the debate yet. I'm going to go back and look for you, homie. Feel bad I missed it. I can't let the boys down. I will find it for my knock <laughs> Yo, don't worry about it, Karma. It's all right, bro. It's all right. We got another five from Shar Jamel. It says, what organizations or race would you put yourself inside of the One Piece world? I gave Seb Celestial Dragon because of the fishman. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. <sighs> what race of people he's saying we would be? Organization or race, he said. You could choose either or. I'd, I'd definitely be a Rev. I feel that. D Clan. I feel that too. Same D. Dang it, I'm not. Yeah, I'm going to stick with that. D Clan. You already yeah. Lawrence D. Dill. I know, that's why I said. I, <laughs> thought about it, I thought I was like, wait, <laughs> that's going to come you back. You set yourself up. <laughs> yeah, I did. Yeah, so so much. All right, everything else? All right, everything is done? All right, guys, if you weren't here before, we're trying to get our likes to, like, a 1,000 likes. So if you can help us out, do that. Uh, we greatly appreciate it. But other than that, um, we are going to get into the One Piece live action. Uh, we watched episode two, and we, we were sharing thoughts, and I said, you know what? Should we review this uh, on the show? And then ultimately, I think we all just decided, like, yeah, let's just leave it for the show and we'll just sit and think about it. Um, I'm not going to say what our reaction was, but uh, we're just going to give it because um, we did watch the episode two times. I watched it two times. Lawrence said he watched it twice. Lionel kind of watched it two times already. Like, I went, like, I skimmed through it because um, I didn't have time to work. So I just watched a review of somebody watching it. So I got bits and pieces there. Yeah, and then Seb was doing, like, little uh, notes to it. But it's the episode with Buggy. So mm -hmm. this was one of the yeah. episodes that we were looking forward to. Uh, so to start us off, uh, I'm going to go with Law. What did you uh, think about episode two? And uh, we'll do scores after. Okay. So 
episode two. I was I'm a, I was looking really I was really looking forward to it, watching it. But sadly to say, when I did watch it, um, I was left a little like wanting something different. You know, I wasn't fully happy with what I saw. And the reason why I'm gonna clarify is because I feel like with the characters and what how the the show episode went, it's misrepresenting and um, not staying true to who the characters really are. That's how I could sum it up. I'm not gonna get to it because I don't wanna. I'm not trying to bash the live action at all because I believe they're doing they're trying to do good work, but from what I appreciated about the beginning of One Piece and what they were showing. Uh, it didn't live up to that, you know. Uh, like it just for example, like for example, um, going into when they first meet Buggy, right? And um, you had Zoro, Luffy in there, and Buggy's trying to capture them, right? From tell me, guys, when you guys watch this show, and all we seen up until the beginning until now, do you guys ever see the real, you know, Luffy and Zoro? ever just giving up and letting themselves be captured. Especially to like someone like Buggy. You know? With no no one to protect on the line, it wasn't there. They just kind of just gave up. And then later on you hear Zoro saying, trying to get out. Why'd you give up in the first place? Why'd you let yourself get captured in the first place? It didn't stay true. From the main part, I don't want to attack it too much, but the main thing is why I'm bringing this up is like, from what we've seen so far, does Luffy and Zoro seem like are presented to you as conquerors i don't see that from them like uh they don't seem strong really either you know like uh zoro didn't even get his one-on-one in that on that uh buggy arc and i understand like this is all right maybe the buggy arc wasn't that great or did um they're saving the greater stuff for like zoro later on against mihawk but that gotta wait for that but right now i don't see like i don't see luffy as Luffy. I don't see Zoro as Zoro right now. And even Shanks. I don't see Shanks as Shanks. I don't see Garp as Garp. The only one I'm okay with is Nami. She's presenting Nami relatively well. But aside from all that, it doesn't... It just so, I'm not trying to get into it because I don't want to spend too much on it because I want to talk about the chapter and I know... Because if you guys enjoy the one uh, live action, that's great. Keep enjoying it. Keep watching it. I'm not going to tell you not. But as for me, I... The, I'll word it this way. The way they chose to represent the show, the characters, and the way they go about it, I was hoping for something else. That's why I'm not fully set on it, you know? But they're doing good work. Like, the graphics are good. The way they did Buggy and his ability look good. The way Luffy and his ability looks good. But the, the portrayal, I think, is being misrepresented to who they are. Um, and I think they're going to say more details. But I feel like I talked enough about it. But um, it's, it's not what I wanted. And... Is not being represented in the right way to me. All right. Um, I'll go next. Um, one of my biggest issues uh, with the show uh, was Shanks and Garp. Um, I, For one, Shanks never stated ever in the beginning of all of One Piece that he was going after the One Piece. Yeah. That just never happened. Yeah. Like, it just never happened. The reason why, I think it was chapter, I forgot what chapter it was, but I think it was like whenever Wano ended and, you know, Shanks was like, yo, we're going after the One Piece. That was like chapter like 1,050, bro. Like we didn't know about his true intentions Mm -hmm. for 1,050 chapters. Right. And now it just got stated, right? So for me, with the Shanks part, Shanks was there to let Luffy know what pirating was, what piracy was, what pirating meant, what what he was truly getting himself into for something that he wanted to do. And when I saw that Shanks was more inspirational than Goofy, that was like one of the problems I had watching it with you guys because from what I know is that Shanks was trying to deter Luffy from trying to become a pirate the whole time. Like, he, like Luffy would be like, yo, I want to join your pirate crew. Let me join it. And then he'd be like, nah. Like, you're not joining a pirate crew. You're not strong enough. Like, you, like why would I want somebody that would just sink in water? Mm-hmm. Like, I don't, <laughs> I don't need you. You'd be an anchor. Mm-hmm. And then he's like, nah, 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 nah. Like, let me join. Let me join. And then he's like, yo, you're not, like, you're, you're still like a kid. And then Luffy was like, no, I'm not. You're just doubting me. 
And then he'd be like, oh, do you want some milk? <laughs> and then yeah. and then he was like, yeah, I take some milk. And then Luffy drinks some milk. And then Shanks is like, pirates don't drink milk. <laughs> and that was like one of the things that I loved about Shanks was that he was there to be goofy and to deter Luffy from becoming a pirate, but he didn't want to kill the dream of him becoming a pirate. He was basically saying, like, you're not ready. With this Shanks, it's like, yo, I'm going to inspire you, let you know I love you, and, like, I always got your back. Like, but you're just not ready right now. Right? Like, Luffy had to say, you know what, I'm not ready, Shanks. Mm -hmm. And then he was like, I understand, and put the hat on his head. And... For me, I was just like, yo, that's not it. And then it led further into, like, the fighting bar scene with Higuma. Mm -hmm. And, like, the big thing about Shanks, too, is, like, he's he's very in the pocket. Like, we never knew what he could do. We never knew how dangerous he was, right? Like, he let the drinks get poured all over, whatever, whatever, right? But it's, like, he looked at, he like, one of Higuma's uh, men oh and put up his, his hand like yeah. this mm -hmm. and shot the... <laughs> And he acted like he shot somebody, but it was yeah. Lucky Rue behind him. Yeah. And I'm like, bro, Shanks would never do that. Nope. Instead, what happened in that moment was another another tale of, yo, this is piracy. Like, if we're pirating, this is not games. Like, we're real pirates. We don't play by rules, right? So Lucky Rue comes out of nowhere, which is the most famous scene out of the, probably the pre-time skip, right, for, for Shanks. Yeah. And he points it at the guy because the guy's pointing the gun at Shanks' head. And then Shanks looks at him and goes, you know you shouldn't play around like this. Mm -hmm. And then Lucky Roo just bucks him. Yeah. First death of One Piece ever. So I was saying to myself, like, yo, that's, that's like a missed opportunity. And then we saw Shanks fight it. And I had an issue with it. Like, granted, the Yasop thing was dope. Yeah, I thought the Yasop, Yasop thing, yeah. that was nigga, dope. yo, that yeah. was dope. That, yeah. Yo, because they did fight, but I'm not I'm not trying to be nitpicking. I'm just saying, realistically, what makes Shanks Shanks wasn't making Shanks Shanks in the One Piece live action. It wasn't. Yeah, there there was a lot going on that just like even even so, like in that same moment, right? Luffy at the beginning of this episode was doing gum gum pistol. Right? Later on, Shanks when uh, he sees Luffy's on the ground or being hemmed up by Higuma, right? He goes to Luffy. What happened? I thought your your pistol was yeah, really he, strong. Yeah. yeah. Like, again, he's he's um, antagonizing him or teasing him and making fun of him, but letting him know, like, I still got your back. So it's like the whole time Shanks is supposed to do that. Yo, this dude is just like, yo, sh you could do whatever you want, bro. Yo, you could be the best pirate, bro. Don't worry about it, dog. You got this, dog. And I'm like, I was like, yo, this this is not it for me, bro. It's mm -hmm. it you're 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 letting too much of what Shanks's end goals are come out too early, which takes away the mystique of Shanks. Yep. This is what makes him so likable is that he's been off screen this whole time, and we just don't know anything about him. Yeah, yeah. I thought that was really important. Yo, buggy, looking for the Grand Line map. Where's where's Captain John's treasure? <laughs> yeah, that's all not they, did, they didn't even show the buggy ball destruction, which was like huge for me. Um, again, sh Luffy goes to stretch his arm to catch his hat. The next scene, Luffy's being stretched as torture. <sighs> buggy saying that you know he was betrayed by Shanks. Oh yeah. <laughs> Yo, Buggy punches Luffy after gassing him, and then knocks Luffy out in the same moment. Guess he got hockey. <laughs> like, Zoro's corny. Zoro's yo, I Little legitimately like, yo, he's Little he's corny, bro. Yeah. Like I'm sorry, like Zoro is corny. Reason being, Zoro literally out of nowhere says to the whole circus, <laughs> "Yo, y'all better put y'all weapons down, or I'm taking all y'all out." And it, then in the very next scene, he doesn't fight. Buggy goes, <laughs> "Yo, put." Yo, put this guy over here. And then he he crosses his arms and the two dudes just pick him up and just walk him to the, <laughs> walk him to the metal circle. It made, it made no sense. It. Yo, it was terrible, it bro. Was I was like, yo, what? That well, was that was so bad. What was bro. the point of that statement? Was, yo, it was terrible, bro. The thing is they could have easily just had them locked up. From the jump. Yeah. From the jump. You right. knocked and them out. Like, from okay. the jump. You knocked them out. From the jump. You knocked them out. They walked into <laughs> capture. <laughs> Listen, bro, it was terrible. Oh. The Nami leaving the circus for five seconds and then being like, oh my God, the town is destroyed. Coming back in after getting captured and be like, yo, you did this to this town. Bro, the whole time since we watched her since episode one till now, she hasn't cared for anybody. She's been about herself. 
That's been the main thing. The only reason she made was like, yo, I've been a part of something like this before. Yeah. I don't, I don't, like, it was just so forced, bro. And yeah, I, it was definitely forced. Yeah, I, I have to agree. I know I'm about to end, guys, my bad. But, yo, I had to agree with Lawrence uh, after this episode with Garp. Because at first, I was like, yo, I think Lawrence is being a kind of picky with the Garp situation. Because, you know, whatever, whatever. Yo, legitimately, this time around, Garp is kind of creepy. <laughs> <laughs> yo, he kind of creepy. Yo, he's just he's just creepy. But the thing is, too, he's not goofy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like Garp is a marine, right? He's a marine. He takes marine things seriously. But he also don't care. He does whatever he wants. Anytime we see people trying to like tell Garp what to do, he's not doing it. Like he just doesn't care. He eating a bag of chips. He's yeah. doing what he yo, wants. Yo, when we first saw Garp and he pulled up, he slept like. Through somebody's monologue of threatening him. Mm-hmm. And then woke up. And he was like, yo, what happened? Mm-hmm. And they were like, yo, you just got cut. <laughs> by Morgan. Yeah. yeah. There, there's just like, like him being the focus point of what like the Marines are trying to do. I just don't think that Garp should be that person. He's like, not. They should, not have, they should have made a, a completely new admiral. Or even put Bogart in that situation and yeah. gave him the, the courage. That, you know, gave him more screen time. Like, I don't care, bro. Yeah. But at the end of the day, it was like... Garp really just not Garp. He's not Garp. So I fill you with the misrepresentation of characters, and I feel that too, and it takes away the mystique. Now, yo, Kobe, she cool. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. I, th- I think the, the other thing too, they also took Kobe out of that position of what he is because Kobe is super down for Luffy. He's let it known, like, to Marines before he's down to Luffy. But when Garp got really close and was, like, seriously, like, talking to him, like, yo, you 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 cool with this dude? And he was like, she was like, nah. I think they were trying to replace the, the moment where, like, he punches him or whatever. But, like, it, it's it didn't still, come off the same. Yeah, it didn't come yeah. off the same. Yeah. It didn't come off the same. So, um... I don't, I don't, I don't know what to say, man. I, I had a really, you know, I, I had the episode before at a four point three, and then we were watching it, and then I watched it a second time. Two point ten, mm-hmm. like two, two point one. I, I don't know. Like Nami broke the glass with her pole. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, Luffy could have just punched it. Like uh, there's just like maybe it's stronger on the inside, bro. I don't know. Yeah, there, there was just a lot of like. There was a lot of bad moments this episode. And I was really hyped because I was on a buggy train. I was like, yo, this is the coolest buggy gonna be. I was I was like, yo, I'm down to see buggy. Did they do a, a couple things that were cool? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There were a couple things that were cool. But realistically for me, bro, this is like if the, the rest of the season is like this going forward, like I'm I'm gonna just have a hard time. Yeah. I'm really in. So my bad for taking up so much time. I just had notes. I mm-hmm. just want to speak on certain things. So mm-hmm. but you go. All right, so I'll, I'll list the things that I did like first, and I'll try to be quick with this. Um, I'm just glad the live action got the bros together as a whole. We don't get to hang out as a group often, so the fact that we were able to do this as, on like a watch party kind of thing we did, I thought that was dope. Yeah. I want to continue to do that, so shout out to the live action for that. Uh, Luffy throwing that map was hilarious. I, I don't care what <laughs> nobody say that. I was like, <laughs> I, I wasn't expecting all that. Um, I was fine with Buggy being stronger. I actually liked that. Yeah, that was one of the good things. Yeah, like... We were talking about like whether we liked Buggy being able to lift his feet off the ground while he's moving his body. I loved it because like that limitation is so BS to me. <laughs> like we got people that are capable to do all this stuff, and Buggy can't move his body unless his arms are on the his feet are on the floor. That's that's like, like I get it's supposed to be a gag, but like come on, bro. Um, beyond that, the dialogue seemed a bit forced throughout yep. the episode. Yep. I didn't like that. Um, Larry brought up the Shanks portion. I really didn't like that they changed it. Like, Larry talked about the, the pointing and shooting with the gun. The the real point of that is, like, how, how impactful was that moment for Luffy to see? Mm-hmm. They bypassed that entirely. Luffy, if you watch it, his eyes are basically closed when that happens, and then the guy, like, escapes with him. Yeah. So, like, one, there's no reason to, like, of all the things that we had issue with how they could possibly recreate in the series... That was not one of the moments to me. That's like the easiest thing you could recreate. Yeah. Like L- L- Luffy's gum gum, okay, that's hard. Buggy's chop chop, that's hard. The devil fruits, the quirkiness, whatever. Shanks being a regular human saying, yo, don't point this at me. This isn't a game. 
to emulate that I'm a real pirate and this is what real pirates are like for the main character to get an emulation of that. That was like the easiest thing they could have did and they, for whatever reason, took it out for that super goofy gunpoint yeah. scene, which I, yeah. I did not understand that at all. Um, in, in general, they're doing a lot of this like, so One Piece in the earth, like One Piece as a whole does show don't tell, right? And the choo-choo scene is like a perfect example of this. And they erased it entirely. Where Luffy goes to, to help the dog after the, the, the building gets destroyed and everything, right? And they essentially erased that moment of Nami realizing that Luffy's different with Luffy basically verbalizing that he's different. I'm a different kind of pirate. That, is, that was my least favorite line in the, in the episode because Luffy doesn't care how you view him. That He does not care. He will never care. Mm. He doesn't want to show the world he's a different kind of pirate. That is that is like the opposite. The yeah, he doesn't care what you think about him. He's going to be a pirate by any whatever way he feels is right. If he saves the people, he saves the people. It's not because he's a different kind of pirate. It's because this is what I felt like doing in the moment. And so like for them to not see, understand that is like the core concept of what Luffy is. And if he's going to be preaching this way, like telling people the kind of pirate he's trying to be to get them up to join for to join us that's not what luffy is that's just intrinsically not what luffy is so that really bothered me um like I, like him saving people the saving the people's fine yeah, right we do that but he's out here basically trying to spew an ideology yeah yeah you get what i mean like that's just not luffy uh, just to add real quick yeah. luffy openly says from the beginning I don't like heroes. I'm not a hero. Mm-hmm. By Luffy saying, like, I, don't put me as a hero. Oh, okay. Yeah, because he don't say yeah. he don't like heroes. Yeah. Yeah, like, yeah, he yeah. doesn't like, all right, Luffy doesn't want to be a hero. Yeah, don't put right. him as a picture as a hero. Like, if you said, if you knew a banquet as me as a hero, don't do it. But him saying, I'm a different kind of pirate and doing this is kind of showing case I'm the hero pirate. Mm-hmm. And that's what Sebastian's talking about. Yeah, listen, man, it's. Like, we were joking about it. Like, th- this version of Luffy, if Hanya Bald tells him. <laughs> That, like, yo, what he's doing is wrong, and, like, all these people are going to clip people because you're doing this to free... Like, he could be like, dang, you're right. Like, you get what I'm, you get what I'm saying? That, like, that's not that's not the Luffy that we know. Yeah. yeah. So, and, and for that to be the main character, that's just a lot. And, and last thing, Zoro's faith in Luffy was so forced oh, to me. Oh, oh my God. God. Yes, yo, I yo, I'm, I'm, I know we only got X amount of episodes. I know we don't have time. But you can't be telling me Zoro's out here like I found a home and <laughs> Lu- Luffy, Luffy changed that for me after one day. No, it was one it was night. Like one night yeah. where he didn't even actually like help him too much for real. He, he, didn't, he didn't even mess with Luffy. Yo, he did it. He just got to say we're not a crew to. No, that's my home. Like, like what Sebastian said. So this is what it went. Listen, he went man. from laying and sleeping right to saying I'm not a crew to then getting poison gas trapped in a box. Getting taken away after he threatened the, the pirates, getting put onto the wooden board, coming back and be like, yo, Luffy, I just got faith in Luffy. Luffy, <laughs> Luffy changed that, bro. He yeah. changed me, bro. I, I could fix it. I, could. I just... I could fix it. I, I had major... I, I, I gave the highest rating for episode one. Mm-hmm. To the, the higher higher you, than you guys six, did. I gave man. it like a 6.5. I think I gave it a 7 at one point. This episode... I'm giving it a 1, bro. Damn, I'm not even playing. Yeah. I was that upset because one, because I had hot, such high expectations yeah. based off the first episode. I thought we were gonna do some. They everything that they had reverted down for me. Yeah. Um, I did like Buggy. I think if I never yeah we got, like Buggy. I think if I never got the hype that everybody had. I would have liked them more. I I was expecting more, and that's that's not on the live action. That's kind of on the community. They kind of gassed what Buggy was yeah. gonna be. So like. Maybe that's that's not fair, but like I was expecting more impressive acting. I was expecting more impressive, in, in, like being more imposing. I did love that line about "I let them keep their hands." I thought that yeah, was dope. That was fire. Yeah. Um, yeah, that was fire. I'm not gonna drag and then he on. And started clapping. You know? I'm not gonna drag on, but I'll, I'm gonna say this, and this is this is my big my biggest problem. If they don't convey the themes of One Piece correctly, yeah. the show will never hit the yeah. way it's supposed to hit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And this is this is my biggest issue right now with what I'm seeing because they're not conveying those themes well enough. Mm-hmm. And that's like, y'all yeah, know I don't read one piece for the fighting. You get what I'm saying? I read it for the, like the narrative structure 
and the themes and the storytelling and the show don't tell aspect of it. If you can't land on those things, you'll never be able to convey it the way that I would need it to be. But it does seem to get people hyped and into the series. Like everybody I've saw, Marv watched the whole damn thing. Yeah, Marv so it. if it's gonna be able to do that, great. I'm happy for it. I hope it does well. I heard they announced season two. Mm-hmm. I'm happy for that too. Yep. But it'll never be what it could be if yeah. the, if it continues this way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I'll stop there. <clears throat> All right, Lionel. Um, what everybody's saying here, um, I agree with him a lot. Um, because like they're like they said, they're taking away. Showing things that we loved about One Piece. And a lot of it's the lore. Like, the lore of Shanks, the lore of Zolo, the lore of Luffy. Like, in a way, you're taking characters, taking them out of character. Like, for instance, like Lauren said about um, being conquerors. It was heavy in the beginning. Joel, Zolo expressed his will. A strong will in a man who wants to become the world's greatest swordsman. The way they're having Zolo now is like, you start questioning, does he want to be the world's greatest swordsman? <laughs> <laughs> like, that's, like, that's never a question to Zolo. It's... What Mort said, it's either Zolo's the world's greatest swordsman or he's or he's dead. It's either one or the other. He's pretty much he, Zolo's dream is to become the world's greatest swordsman. What I'm seeing here is like I got my own thing going or whatever. But like that's fine him saying that. But the way he says it is like his, his his ambition towards it is not real. It's not strong. And like when we see in the manga and the anime, Zolo even said, "Yo, if you Luffy going to prevent me from becoming the world's greatest swordsman." I won't make you cut yourself, pretty much. Like, Haraki, you know, the thing. And that's so strong. You know, it changes a little bit, but he, like, you know, Zola just puts Luffy's dream on his dream. To, like, he's going to make Luffy become Pirate King and try to achieve his goal as becoming the world's greatest swordsman. But this Zolo, it's like, I'm not, I'm not trying to knock anybody, but honestly, the way the Zolo I'm seeing, he fits more of a Sasuke. <laughs> like, yeah. I'm dead serious. He fits more of a Sasuke. And Sasuke and Zolo, they have the cool, bad character, but they're completely different characters. And like, and that's what I'm like, and I don't like it. Like I don't like I. Like, that's what I'm talking about. When I see a character, and you're supposed to do an animated do- an animation adoption of that character, I want to see that character. I told Lawrence made a joke that honestly, people from Fast and Furious they see more strong willed and durable than the people in One Piece right now. Who are supposed <laughs> to be those characters? Like you see the Rock, really get his arm broken and flex out of that cast and get out of there. <laughs> when you see Zolo in the in the manga, we see Zolo take a buggy ball and get up. Oh man, like that was, it was nothing. That was in the manga and anime. And in the live action, Buggy pushes this man against a glass screen and Zolo's like, oh, like he's struggling to get up. <laughs> and just like we see in the manga, he took a buggy ball. Buggy just pushed him to a glass screen and Zolo struggling to get up like he got hurt. It's just like, where's the manliness? Where's the Zolo that we loved? The ambition, the strong-willed man Zolo. And same thing with Luffy. Again, I'm not seeing a future Pirate King here either. And that's the thing we're talking about. Like, you're taking these characters out of their, um, pretty much the characters that we loved. Like Luffy, when it comes to the, the, come the, pink, uh, the king of the pirates. We see Luffy's such a strong-willed person. When I'm seeing Luffy strong against Buggy, like this, but like, like you know, is I'm, I'm not trying to like the show is good, as it has some moments where it's good and people love it, and that's what I appreciate. It's getting people to one piece, but like the fact that I see Luffy, in which didn't make sense to me, that Luffy was punching Buggy, and it wasn't even hurting him. No, that means Buggy's stronger. So no, but the, like things, physical attacks do hurt Buggy. That's true. Theory. If you st- it, it understood why Zolo was cutting Buggy and wasn't hurting because he's a chop shot fruit. You can't slice Buggy. But Luffy physically punched Buggy twice in the face. I mean, once in the face and once in the stomach. And even if you even say that he separated his body, like, like you know, he's putting his body separation while Luffy's making contact, it would still hurt Buggy. It doesn't matter. Because like Lawrence said, and we all could agree, Buggy's the exact opposite of Luffy. Swords hurt Luffy, swords can't hurt Buggy. Punches can't hurt Luffy, well, punches could hurt Buggy. That's their thing. Yet now Buggy, he can't get hit by physical attacks, kind of, and swords? Just like, all right, how come he's not piloting yet? <laughs> like, what could hurt him at this point? Swords and physical attacks? Yeah, low gear, bro. Yeah, <laughs> like, pretty much. Like, it does, honestly, they're like... I mean, I wasn't mad at that, though. No, no it didn't make sense. Like, yeah, you, know, you can make Buggy stronger, but making him stronger that way doesn't make sense. It contradicts other things in the manga. Just to add that, what made it worse, you saw Buggy punch Luffy in the stomach, and Luffy was like, oh. Yeah. And I'm like, All right, I'll give you the gas one because it was gas. Yeah. You can't explain that one. 
Luffy shouldn't even have felt that. He's rubber. How is Buggy able to punch Luffy in the stomach and make him like quince? When after after he just attacked his hat, his treasure. This were, this, go ahead. I'm sorry. I, yeah, like I like the like, I like how they making Luffy ac- acrobatic. Like yeah, that's who the, Luffy is. The, the they, 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 they do good at during yeah. the animation of the fighting and the choreography of the fight. Some of them, like they're pretty good. I'm mean, gonna. That's what I like about it. Like the fact that you have um, Buggy able to separate his body looks pretty good. Yeah, that was dope. You know, Luffy stretching is dope. But like you guys hit on certain parts, but you miss other big aspects where it's like we start questioning. All right. Is this really One Piece though? Is it hitting as a way yeah. like you know it should be? You, you're taking th- things away, and it's just like you could just like Chibasha said, a simple scene that yeah. was very impact to the main character and to mm-hmm. us. You took that away for yeah. a scene that didn't even make any sense. That like, even Shanks looked back, questioning who did that. When just like then why did you do it in the first place? <laughs> yeah, I thought it was gonna. I thought at least he's going to do that, and he shoot the guy, and Shanks like with a calm demeanor, right. like you know, like remember that was the losers. With um, Chris Evans, mm. yeah. remember that scene when he did the same thing? Yeah. <laughs> then, yo, I thought, oh, okay, you're doing that. Then you look, cause Chris Evans didn't look back. He only knew the boy got my back. Wow, but they I turned th- one of the most yo, badass moments yo, it was in bad. the series of that era they, to just something that was so crazy. Yeah, it's and it, there was no reason to do it. And what's bro. bad about it? The whole put your life on the line, right? Luffy literally mimics this. Not only like later on with Usopp. But have you noticed when Luffy's going after his friends and fighting uh, for becoming King of the Pirates, Luffy's putting his life on the line. That's how Luffy shot from Shanks. You're not, Luffy even says it like, uh, they always get at Luffy, right? Be serious. Take this seriously. Luffy says, like, I am serious. But because Luffy's so goofy and like his rubber ability, they look down on Luffy. But Luffy's really putting his life on the line for his dream. Yeah. And that's why it was so funny because he saw what Shanks, like Larry was saying, Shanks was showing him what it means to be a pirate, how to be a pirate. It's not playing funny games here. Yeah, we have fun, you drink everything, but you being a pirate is putting your life on the line because there's no rules. You could lose your life in an instant. Luffy really says this stuff later on, how much the example of Shanks stood on Luffy. Luffy modeled himself similar to how Shanks did, and Shanks modeled himself similar to how Gold Roger was. You putting your life on the line for your hopes, your dreams. That's how you become a pirate. That's how you live free because you're not restricting it because your life's on the line for it. It means that much to you. And then also, too, like, it's like, the weapons for not for threatening people. It's you're taking all that away because also too the ad for to, I'm sorry, Lana, that's why I add these things. Is what bothered me too. If you go back to when like he was holding up uh, Luffy and Shanks came, then you saw his Shanks's crew fighting. Even though it should have just been Ben Beckham showing the difference between they're that strong. But I'll give I'll give you that whatever. Asop's thing did look cool, but where was Shanks? Because he was standing he was standing in the bar, out of nowhere. That guy at the belt and just leaves with Luffy? What were you doing, Shanks? You didn't show Shanks he, fighting. He circled back and slammed that one guy. No, but he came from the bar. Yeah. So they went out of the scene to show that. How did this guy escape in front of you? Because in the anime and in the manga, the He's guy does like a smoke, smoke screen yeah. and everything, and they get away because the chick is oh, thinking like, oh, I'm going down. So it has an excuse to why they left. There's no excuse here. Yeah. Shanks, you weren't fighting. This guy walked away with Luffy right in front of you. And where's Luffy. That, that that makes no sense. And then don't even get me started on how Shanks launches his arm in the live action. <laughs> it is the, it makes absolutely Man, no don't. sense. Well, no, it never no. made no, sense. No, no. The thing is, like, I was gonna touch on that. Like, the thing is, okay, we all think Shanks could have knocked it out with hockey, but the point was that Shanks came there at the last minute, the last second. We didn't see Shanks at all when the Sea King was coming at Luffy until it bit. Then you see Shanks having Luffy. Like he just arrived in the nick of time. Yeah. Just to save Luffy and his arm having to get bitten off. Then he scares it off. Well, this is like, he saved Luffy at plenty of time to <laughs> knock out that thing because they made eye contact. But no, I'm going to watch this Sea King. Oh, he's going to bite my arm. Maybe my arm at this point. I protected Luffy. Then go back. Then I'm going to scare him my kingdom position. When well, you could have just did it the whole time. Just like... Again, that's what that's the stuff where they, they didn't make any sense. Yo, and add the part if y'all check because I mean, watched it. This dude, after he like scared the sea king with his conky, Shanks took a knee, like it exerted some part. Yeah. He went, oh. 
the chase, the Luffy runs. I, I, I was getting chalked that up to him losing the arm. No, bro. what you mean? No, what you mean? No, no, no bro. No, he lost his arm. So, but dude, I'm sorry. Listen, shout out, shout out to the live action. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Yeah. Out, I yo. tried to get in there, man. Congrats, shout, shout, trying, yeah. congrats on season two, yo. Yeah. yeah, man. Listen, people like it. Listen, if you guys like it, like I mean, good for yeah, you guys. Yeah, good like, for you. you know, good, if it's yeah, getting yeah. expensive, it's getting people in one piece. Great, but like for us, like yeah, you know. It's, we it's have just a hoodwink. <laughs> <laughs> Let's play. Run up, Mark. Flat out to sea. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, so Lawrence, what's your score? Honestly, the only thing I liked, that's why I didn't even give my rating. The only thing I liked was the Yasop thing. So like that, the, yo, that so, was fire. So, dude. What's, so what's your score, bro? <laughs> um, I'll, you know what? I'll be more generous, but it's not going to be. I'll give it a one. <laughs> Because the young dude, I'm here right now. Yo, it's it's because I want to make generous. The reason why the oh y'all something, goodness. I'm gonna give it a point. I'm gonna give it a point. Yo, bro, but I honestly, it was like a three. Yeah, nah. something. Nah. He said he's being generous. Because yeah, I, I use that to give it a point. Because to me, I don't have anything for that. What I saw, oh, there's nothing. I was just like, okay. I'm, I'm gonna give. I'm gonna change my one to a three out of respect for Emily and Matt, bro. They were nice to us. They were nice. Yeah, I'm gonna go three. And I laughed like three, four times in there. Yeah, I'm a, you know, I, you know, I want a two for Emily and Matt. I'll go 2.5. 2.5. You, Lionel? I'm just going to give it a Sebastian. I'll give it a three. Yeah. What's yeah. your real rating? <laughs> 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 oh, man. It'll probably be a two. Two. Yeah, I can't go over the one because like there's some moments I did like. Yeah, there were moments. So yeah. like that's what I give it to. Like maybe it could be maybe a three to a four. Like you know, but yeah, but good. Mm-hmm. And also the sea king looked pretty good. Like the animation. Yeah, that's like the animation. Certain things you guys are doing fantastic on. So I might I might give it a four because certain things you are doing good, but certain things just it's just hitting me in my heart. I'm just yeah. saying it's just like. It's you know because again I want you guys to do good. You got and you guys are doing it. Just certain things you're just not. You're not hitting it for us. But yeah, but I don't again I'm not we're not blaming I think I don't know if it's the directing or what it is. Because I'm not even really blaming the actors, really. It's yeah. mostly of how they're putting it all together. Yeah. It's just it's being misrepresented to what I understand what One Piece is and how also do I understand that Oda Oda is okaying a lot of stuff, but I'm gonna say this right now. We all know that we all know Oda. He's a troll, he okays anything. <laughs> <laughs> all right? He okays anything. Bro, they He's said, a goofball. They asked him what Killer's favorite food was, and they were like, it's spaghetti, right? And he was like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and now <laughs> Killer eats spaghetti. Like, like, okay, so, but try patrol. Through the mask. Just a proven <laughs> fact, I'll show you the type of troll real quick that Oda is. You guys don't know, like, the, pes- the pes- um, Pegasus animal. Mm. The majestic Greek animal that even, like, the Greek gods would fly on. The horse with the wings and everything fly. That's right? right, yeah. Yeah, right? We saw how it was represented in One Piece. <laughs> that goofy-looking horse and what Godfall was riding. Uh, the Sky yeah. P. Yeah, the Sky P. You know? So he took that thing that everyone, even in the anime, how we reacted, <laughs> it's the same how the anime characters reacted. Like, oh, yeah, that's, that's I guess that's Pegasus. You know? Like, yeah. that's Oda. So he's going to okay with it because he likes having fun. So if you say that, okay, oh, he's okaying everything on the show, that's Oda. He's like, yeah, have fun with it. Go with it. Do what you want. Yeah. So. Listen, man. Um. Congratulations on season two. Uh, to everybody that's continuing to watch it and support it, listen, keep doing so. Uh, the more One Piece, the better. Um, but, you know, there's going to be times where people don't ride. You know what I'm saying? Like, people don't do tricks on it um, for the simple fact that I don't think it's nitpicking. I don't think it's, you know, anything of that nature. I just think that. Realistically, we've been troubled with a lot of anime adaptations, and they haven't been great at all. We ran into one that seems to be particularly, you know, higher than the rest. But also, that could not mean a lot, right? Uh, Even though everybody's saying it's good, um, it just depends on how you view One Piece as well. So uh, if you feel like we're nitpicking or you don't like what we're saying, hit that on up. You know, unsubscribe button, bro. Like, you don't got to follow us. You don't got to listen to us. Uh, you can keep your comments to yourself. Um, and, or you could just rock with us. Because, honestly, like we've always done, we're going to be truthful. We're going to be honest. We're not going to beat around the bush and just hype something because we love it. We love One Piece. We have a whole podcast on it. 
You could tell us how badly you want our podcast to end because we're not true fans of One Piece. But I think, honestly, if you were a true fan and if you saw what you saw, you would understand that the characters are just not being represented the same way they're supposed to be. And regardless if Oda is involved, sometimes even the creator involved doesn't truly um, knock it out the park. And I think that's okay. I think that's okay to have some type of discourse or, you know, disagreement on what you enjoy most about something, right? So I know the community community can be, you know, the community can be awful. But overall, there are good people who understand what we're talking about. So hate, or, hate us or love us. Either way, we're going to still keep shining. Other than that, let's get into the chapter. Uh, Guys ready? Yeah. Yep. All right. We Just got so that some you super chats. You want to, or you want to get the chat first? We're gonna have to get through. Uh, if we do a couple super chats, that's cool. But we don't got time because mm -hmm. I'm not gonna be able to talk uh, throughout the chapter. It's just gonna be you guys. Mm -hmm. We just don't have enough time. So, where do you want to start? Uh, most of my stuff is towards the end anyway. Yeah, I don't have that much on this chapter either, honestly. Yeah, these are quick. So we got 280 from King SSD. It says, does Larry ever get jumped by Mihawk fans? No. <laughs> <laughs> Their hockey isn't strong enough. <laughs> <laughs> we got another uh, two from Alan Wells. It says, Marine Ford was one battle. Why is it called a war? Hmm. It just, it sounds better. I mean, I don't think... It sounds better. The time elapsing means what war is defined as. I think there's it just... It might, actually. I, I just I don't... think so. I think it just sounds better. There's no, like... Real reason I gotta beyond search up that. What war now means. Yeah. <laughs> we got another two from Victor Hate. It says Buggy almost solo all of them if not for those boxes. I mean, <laughs> I like elevated uh, Buggy. War, the definition: a state of armed conflict between different nations or states or different groups within a nation or a state engage in a war. That's the definition. There's no time that needs to be had. It said state of time or whatever, but either way, it doesn't say that there needed to be multiple days, it multiple was, months, whatever. It said a state, state of state, armed state, conflict. A state, like a time, eh, whatever. It doesn't matter. We Is it not a time period that they're fighting? And a war yeah. could end in a day. It matters how you do it. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. All right. Whatever. Either. We got another 20 <laughs> from Mohammed Lear. It says, yo, guys, what's up? Sebastian, I just wanted to let you know that the OPLA production team found someone to play as dragon and he's african-american now i get it but if dragon was not biologically luffy's dad i wouldn't complain i don't think it means that technically like his mom could be whatever race yeah like it doesn't listen bro my mom makes... is a fully white woman <laughs> my my niece is completely black so it doesn't matter yeah, bro. It, doesn't, it doesn't matter too much uh we got another 10 from darth vader it says gear five theory in order to balance it out there's got to be a downside to using it. What if Luffy is going to go Gear 5 too often and he is to go permanently Gear 5 and Joy Boy takes over? Think Hulk in uh, Thor Ragnarok. He's just losing himself then completely. Yeah, that, that would tie into the that would never awakening happen. things. Luffy's yeah. a conqueror. It yeah, never yeah, happened yeah. to him. It's never happened. Or, or, or if it happened, he'd have to like... It, he'd have to overcome it again somehow, but yeah. Yeah, I don't see that. We got another three-month membership to Nakama status from Anthony Herrera. It says, hashtag laws a savage. I think they're talking about you. Yeah. We got another five from Anthony Herrera. It says, Shanks live action was so bad and cringe. I'd rather see Dragon roll up a joint. LOL. <laughs> Lionel, you ready for your shift at Impel Down? <laughs> we got another five from Damian Lillard. It says, Damian Lillard. We got, it says, could Luffy's drums... Awaken the One Piece like Zunisha and the Iron Giant. You have to wait for our answer, yeah, bro. Yeah. You want ahead. Yeah. And then we got a dollar from Luffy Nick uh, with no comment, but thank you. Yeah, thank you. Hey, guys, I'm trying to get our likes on this video to like a thousand. Yo, hit that like button, bros. Um, all right, let's get into the chapter. So the title of this chapter is Kuma, the Tyrant's Holy Land Rampage. But before we jump into the actual chapter to find out why Oda chose that title, we have Jimbei on the cover page. He's being smushed by giant cuddly remoras. Do you guys have anything to say about this guy, specifically the left side of the table? And we'll start with Seb. <laughs> I, I, did, I have nothing, bro. <laughs> I have nothing. And it's not a negative because it's Jimbei or anything like that. I just, I'm not a big... Uh, reader fan request guy. I don't dive into theories that could become of that. Did you say reader fish guy? Reader fan request. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Jesus. 
Uh, yeah, I don't have anything. All right. Long? Not much, really. You just swimming with the fishes, you know. <laughs> I thought, but like, I don't That's think Jimmy's gonna, you Lauren, know, pass anytime soon. Lauren's huh? still on his uh, his, his mafia team. Yeah, right? right? <laughs> with the fishes. What's with you, bro? Yeah. You know. All right, Lionel. Um, I don't really have much any, anything either. I just thought of maybe Neptune because he can manipulate fish and how Jimmy's constantly communicating with fish. He might have a fish army, and that might help the straw hatch later on. Maybe I have no idea, but that's about it. All right. Uh, we head back to Medi Joa. People yell out that someone has finally climbed to the top. It's the invincible slave Kuma, the Knights of Medi Joa. Wrap Kuma in chains. They say he's hellbent on reaching his destination. Then, Ursa shock happens, destroying the area around Kuma. Kuma gets up and Akainu is there to greet him. Akainu asks him what he's doing. Uh, what he's doing. Akainu mentions, first, it was the revolutionaries invading the other day and now this. Celestial dragons yell out to Akainu that they don't have food they want. They want to know what's happening. They've also been injured and want Kuma to be taken out right now. Akainu then tells Kuma if they can't control him, then they have no choice but to take him out. He's dangerous. Plus, he lost his free will and he's heard he's no different from a, a man that's passed. So, if that's so, uh, Akainu wants to know where is he going. Then Akainu does Hellhound, which takes off half of Kuma's face. Kuma's bleeding like crazy, and all of a sudden, he sprints away. Akainu chases after and catches, his, uh, catches Kuma's foot. Then Kuma teleports away. Akainu remembers his conversation with a captured Bonnie. Says, uh, Celestial Dragons ask where he went, and uh, they tell Akainu he's a worthless fleet admiral. Then Akainu says to himself, where would you go? A mere puppet with no mind or will at all. What did you guys think about this? And we'll start with Seb. All right, so one, you already know I love seeing my boy Akainu in action. You know what I mean? <laughs> this It brings me back to, to why I love One Piece so much is Akainu clipping fools. You know what I'm saying? Showing them what it's about. Uh, but it, just be less trolling. But I, I like to see the interaction that Kuma was having. I still don't know what his goals are, but anytime anybody's repping, wrecking havoc on Mary Jo is dope to me. Um, I love Yudas' shock. Like I, I love that attack. I loved it in the anime. Um, I liked seeing it here. I, I thought the interaction between Akainu and Kuma was really dope, and and like it seemed like he might even consider him a friend or something. Like the way he was interacting and talking to him, he felt like I want to say straight up remorse. But there was, like, more there. like, And we'll get deeper into that into later in the chapter based off, like, Kuma's relationships with people. But I just really like that. Um, and, and I thought there was a little bit of, like, at towards the end where he's talking about, like, where are you going? You're, like, a puppet and with no mind. Like, you have no control or whatever. I feel like he might have been talking about himself a little bit. You know? Like, I'm a fleet admiral. I'm stuck behind this desk. I can't go anywhere. And, like, he's envious of Kuma. Because Kuma, even as a puppet, even with this no mind of my own, he able to just disappear and go do whatever he want. And, like, he can't. So, I like the little flashback with Bonnie. I loved um, Kuma, like, trying so hard to escape. Because, like, you, y'all be forgetting how menacing Akainu is. And, like, this yeah. was showing it. Yo, he lost that leg. Yeah. You know foot. what I'm saying? The foot. foot. Like, it's gone. I, I would assume it's gone. Yeah, that's right. Like, it got melted off. And, like, he had to disappear because he couldn't keep fighting a kind of for any extended period of time. Um, the Celestials complaining about, like, lobster. Like, <laughs> I thought that was funny. Like, you got, you're facing, like, one of the strongest people in the world. He's like, a kind of, they didn't give me my lobster last night. It's like, all right, bro. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, yeah, I don't have much. I just think that there was something there. Um, obviously, the conversation with Bonnie was is important. I, I don't have any major great theories as to what it is, like, what the reasoning really was other than maybe protecting her <coughs> specifically. So, mm -hmm. yeah. All right, Lionel? Um, I don't have that much here either. Like, uh, I mostly just thought of, like, Kuma, like, his target. It kind of reminded me of what he did a while back. And I don't know if it's something similar to what Vegapunk did for him when he did for the Straw Hats. You know, when he, uh, when the Straw Hats were gone for two years um, and he stayed there and protected the Straw Hats ship, for, I guess, two years. We don't know how long or when Kuma started doing it, but I think Vegapunk pretty much programmed that way for him to do that. And that made me think, like, what other programs that Vegapunk allowed Kuma to have so he could 
so he could do certain things, like certain assignments and tasks. We know that the revolutionaries, like he was using it to to record Mayor, Mayor Joa, um, for whatever reason, and they got all that information. But now he's leaving. I don't know if the revolution showed that they got that information or film that he was recording or whatever. But it's like this is not the first time we saw Kuma have an objective. When he's mindless, he's trying to achieve it and do it. He did, you know, he pet the straw hat ship. So what else or what other assignments does he have he's trying to accomplish? And But it's just also sad, like, you know, like, it may believe, like, yo, Kuma's probably going to die. I mean, pass, you know. Because, like, you see, like, he's already so much damage already. And I don't even know how much he, you know, was healed from the um, damage he took from protecting straw hats. I don't think it's, I don't think about fixing him since then. Because that's the last time we saw Kuma, you know, um, in the beginning. We saw him, you know, pack the straw hats. The next time we see Kuma, he was being treated as a slave at um, Mijo. Now we're seeing him taking even more damage. Like, it's like from from the beginning we see Kuma, he's just constantly showing that he's clearly going to pass soon. And now he lost his half his face and his leg. It's like showing like, so hopefully we get a Kuma, like, you know, the objective and seeing Kuma, the reason why he's doing this. You know, reason why he put him in this dire situation. And like, in fact, that you also have assignments, even though your mind is gone, you're trying to achieve. So I thought it's like, in a weird way, it's like poetic, but we don't understand the poetic. Like, you left your daughter. You have to have a good reason why to do that. You know, and especially how Bonnie's reacting. She couldn't understand until she saw um, Kuma's flashback. And now she's all, she understands it now. So for her to have that reaction, and now she's understanding it, is like, did it, is it good enough reason for us as well, for Bonnie to have that reaction? Because, like, what Kuma's going through and leaving your family, pretty much, is, is crazy. All right, Law? Not yet. <clears throat> Sorry. It just goes into, like, um, honestly, it goes into the story, um, Oda's storytelling ability. And this is why he's so good, because what Oda, I mean, Oda's really, really good at is the buildup. Because we got, like, we got to get the reasons why Bonnie changed her mind, and this leads into Kuma's flashback. So we're thinking we're just going to get what Bonnie saw. But no, this honestly goes into, we need, to, we need the whole flashback of Kuma. Like, you know, and I'm thinking like how we got senior pinks. It kind of reminded me of that. Like to line up like a poetic or touching story of for Bonnie to be okay with this or target a new enemy because of this, it's going to be something that's going to be like, like, for example, I'm cut off here because like Lionel mentioned out at the time when we saw Odin, right? To me, when Otis, Odin started dancing, I was like, no, I didn't accept it. I was like, a conqueror doing this, choosing to uh, do this instead of protecting the people, I have to get a good reason. And then when we finally got the story behind it, the good reason, I was like, okay, I can see that, you know? Now, this is even something more, right? You you left your, your daughter, you left your kingdom, you left everything, even to the point where you changed your entire self, where now, even if you saw them again, you can't communicate with them. You literally lost it while you're alive. You made this decision, you know? And now you're hearing this goal because, like, he disappeared, but he climbed up, right? I want to know, like, was this was this to draw attention away from? Because right now, Akainu came, trying to show him that there's no other fleet admiral here, right? He's the only one, because why would Akainu show up? He's the fleet admiral. But we know where Kazaro is. But you know, Fujitori can't come back, because uh, he has, until he captures Luffy and Law, Fujitori is banned from any base, right? And Greenbow was last seen on Wano. So that leaves only one, a Kaino. So what? And you know when Sister Drag is involved, an Admiral has to show up, right? But now we see this interaction with them, where like Sebastian's mentioned, it shows that they have history, showing that Kuma probably has history with all the previous Admirals, but because he was a king of a kingdom. But that goes in deeper, as in why he's speaking to him, because a Kaino, you know, he's the cut to those, you just end him. But he kind of spoke to him first, like kind of like more of curiosity. What are you doing, Kuma? Right? Like, you're trying so hard that it goes for his head, but he dies. And he's like, you're even bleeding and you're even reacting like a human when you should have nothing left. Mm -hmm. Your motives of what he's doing, it shows there's some remnant of you in here. Where are you going? You should be a mindless person. You shouldn't be doing any of this. This doesn't make any Something's not adding up here. And that's what we're getting from Akainu. He's breaking it down. It's like, no, there's still some left in you, but you have a last objective. And it has something to do here. Where is it? But I, So that's going into, like, the backstory where Oda is building up for us, you know? Uh, and that's why we appreciate our older, but him doing so because I said this, he could have just gave us the story when he got it. But no, this makes it more interesting. This the lore behind it. It's like it's actually going to be really well when we get it at the right time of like Kuma's uh, up, whole backstory and why he made that decision he did, which leads up to here now.
Y'all think we get it soon? Maybe. Honestly, there's so much going on. I honestly can't tell you. Mm -hmm. I would have yeah. gone milk this, bro. Yeah. <laughs> keep adding little things yeah. to make it more interesting. Because yeah, yeah, he did, he did the same thing with Odin, bro. Yeah. This is worse, bro. This, this, is, this, is, is, like, this is like this is like years. This is a decade in the making, bro. <laughs> For real. No, yeah. What? All right. Um. All right. Let's go to the next subject. So. We see the Sea Beast weapons on Egghead are basically done uh, for by the Mark III's. Marines have made it to the Fabrio phase. Luffy is in Snake Man form fighting Kazaru. Kazaru uh, says he can see how Luffy defeated Kaido. Kazaru's confused on why Luffy's protecting Vegapunk. Luffy wants to know why he wants to take him out. Kazaru then flies away while saying he doesn't want to. Kazaru, it seems like, is miles away now from Egghead. He wants Luffy to stay out of it. Then Kazaro says acceleration is power and uses his speed to kick uh, Luffy, sending him flying into the Vega Force 1, destroying the robot. Kazaro then kicks ba uh, thinks back to when Vegapunk told him Vega Force 1 was the dream of mankind. Luffy crashes into the laser field. Uh, and then we'll start with Lionel. What did you think about this part, bro? Um, that kick was crazy. What he did um to Luffy, like how far he went back, and um, pretty much, and like the good shows, like I always thought of like when the when Luffy fought Kuma, um, I say pacifist, I should say, and they shot the beams, and like Luffy caught it slow, and we we're saying, all right, those were at the speed of light, and pretty much saying that Luffy is taking the speed of light is slow to him now because how much he progressed his speed and his observation like he leveled up but now you're seeing him actually fighting the man of speed who is into who could manipulate the speed of light and he's actually having a difficult time in his fastest form besides gear fifth and it's like you know that kind of brings certain things to perspective like just because they mimic the speed of light they're not actually the fastest speed of light or I started thinking of is Kazao increasing the speed of light's speed, which is ridiculous because the only thing I heard of that was from Futurama. We increase the speed of light. Like that sounding that is just ridiculous. But the fact that Luffy is struggling with Kazao with speed, but granted, you could say like cause how far Kazao went and Luffy couldn't really see what's fully happening and how fast he moved to hit Luffy, that could have been like a, um, a thing that, you know, because you know, people are going to saying that Luffy, since he's struggling on um, Kizaru and pretty much what Kizaru said, they're knocking Kaido, you know? And it's like, the thing is, with this, like, I understand what they're coming from, but that's not the case. Kaido is still um, this world's strongest creature alive. He's still, like, Kizaru's not packing Kaido, like, just because he did this little thing against Luffy. And again, Luffy's not even his, in um, gear fifth mode. And we saw... Kyle speed blitz and overpower Luffy in Gear Fifth multiple times. So the, him just saying oh the man be Kyle, but also because I was a troll. We saw the same thing when pretty much when Marco kicked Kazao when he blocked it. Because um, I was all that hurt and um, Marco said you liar. You said that all the time that Kazao was a playful like he chose a lot. Even when Ben Beckham like he took the gun it was old Ben Beckham, but later on he's still attacking the straw hats. So just like Kazao is just that's just his personality. Like he. Um, trolls and plays a lot around, but he's a also very deadly and powerful person. But that doesn't mean that he's pay taking on and beating Kaido, or he's so much stronger than Kaido. Because again, Luffy's still not on Kaido's level either. Just because we're seeing this, he just recognized Luffy gotten stronger, but like still, like again, we know Luffy didn't fully beat Kaido, and if Kaido came back again, Luffy would still possibly still lose or still have a difficult time. So them just saying this doesn't prove really anything. Just showing that Luffy's is strong enough to fight these people, and he leveled up and did get stronger, but he still isn't there yet, which we've all been saying. He's still not Yonko level. And we start questioning, is he even ammo level? Or I should say the OG ammo level. Because he could probably take on, um, we all probably think Greenbow's the weakest ammo, and we don't know Fujitora, but like the OG ammos is where like you know they're the strongest. So when he's on that level to face him and take him out, we're going to see. But like just because cause I was saying this, because like, people say stuff all the time. We heard somebody say Jack is the right hand man of Kaido. Was that a fact? No. We King was the right hand man of Kaido. So you can't take everything or some little things or somebody's trolling, whatever, as concrete facts. Because like we will get the real facts later on. 
you can't like, cause people say and say all stuff all the time. Like even the strongest creature alive, Kyle has multiple L's. How he's the strongest creature alive when he has seven L's? When they, oh he can't die when we know so many people could kill him with conqueror's hockey coding. So just like some things are factual and some things are they're fact to a degree, to a certain point. Then when it comes down to it, because again, Whitebeard or again, Shanks, I should say, if Shanks could or wanted to, he could take down Kaido. That's the fact, because he has all the means to do that. But ultimately, Kaido can't pass by ordinary means, and that's what it pretty much means. All right, Lawrence. Uh, no, yeah, I don't. Uh, I don't think I have too much time on this. Uh, I just have no way or shape or form that I think that because I was saying that man, the uh, Luffy. Because we all know, simply put, I'm going to rephrase, simply put, Gear 4, we was proven, is not enough to take down Kaido. So, because I was saying this, guys, just think, you know? Like, Luffy needed Gear 5th to even really fight Kaido. Kaido was uh, holding back, and this is not strong enough to really take it. We saw Luffy get one shot in Gear 4, you know? So, I'm just going to end it there. We know that's not enough to take down Kaido. Like, we've seen it. So, because I was saying that, and we don't even know if Kazaro even fought a Kaido himself for him to really judge Kaido's strength. So that's all I got. Uh, Seth? Oh, uh, yeah. I like this whole interaction. Um, I, I really did. Uh, I know we started off with the, the Sea Beast and, and the ships getting all fighting, but I liked seeing Luffy versus Kazaro. He tapped into like one of his faster modes, Snake Man, obviously. You know me, I'm always about the whole speed is like the hard counter to Future Sight, but Kazaro uses his countering speed with speed. Right, like, and I love that it seems to be homage to Sentomaru that he's doing yeah. in the way that he's blocking the attacks, uh, seemingly incorporating his Devil Fruit in it as well. So he's like shooting beams as defensive, like E Honda. I was <laughs> like, yo, this is dope. Like, I like seeing that from him. Uh, I thought it was cool. The comment about the Kylo thing, yeah, y'all, y'all said it already, bro. Like, come on, like, come on. But just. Anybody using that to scale Kazaru above Kaido is crazy. Like, I, I just I can't I can't get with that. Like I, I I have the admirals and Yonko was a relative thing. If y'all using terms like this to be like yo, so and so is stronger than this person. Now, come on, man. It's just not the case. Um, I'd like to see Luffy sweating, struggling. Like he's clearly taking this relatively seriously. And then Kazaru just that move he did where he stepped back. I I looked at the kanjis right. Speed is weight, acceleration is power. I love seeing that. The first kanji you see is the same one that you get when Sanji disappears because he's moving too fast. The second one is like a new, like, he's just accelerating at a speed that's well beyond that even. Mm. So, like, like Larry said, he went from, like, miles away instantly and then his rocks Luffy. And look at the damage. He flew all the way through into the barrier and everything. So, clearly, Kazaru got more in the tuck. Like, this isn't him going all out either, I don't think. Like, obviously, speed is his, like, go-to. It's his, like, element that makes him hawks. But, like, I don't think this is, like, he could probably get faster than this. Yeah. So I'm excited to see that. Like, obviously, the end of the chapter comes, but, like, I'm excited to see that. I saw that look crazy Luffy getting kicked by that. Like, he, he blocked it with the, you know, with the sprite out. He mm-hmm. tried to block it. He's, like, not even blocking the attack. He's, like, it was bright. <laughs> like, he's, like, covering his eyes. I thought that was funny. That switch coming, man. Um, but in general, like, the... the <laughs> Stupid. <shut up>. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even remember how far Larry got in his question. Yeah. But I liked seeing that kick. And yeah, the acceleration. Yeah, fell, fell into the laser film. Okay. Yeah, that's all I got. Uh, I, I do want to comment on this, because this is... This this kind of like made me like yo what, <laughs> um, Kazaro is super cool, super always, dope, yeah. super dope, bro. But there's one thing about Kazaro that always uh, comes to mind. He's like the most ignorant dude of all time. <laughs> he be trolling, bro. He don't care. It's like it, it, you could toss it up to troll him, but sometimes I'm, I'm like nah, like he's really ignorant. Like the dude really like thought he could just roll up to Onigashima and and Wano and just defeat everybody that was there, right? And then people use that as a yo, he's really strong. And I'm like, no, I know he's really strong, but he's not Big Mom and Kaido strong, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Like he's not doing that. Yeah. And then for him to say that to Luffy, he could be like trolling, but I also believe like to a degree he probably doesn't know how strong Kaido is. And that really, that's really what it falls down to. It's like, bro, you really don't know. Because if you did, you wouldn't be saying this, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, people are going to roll with it, like you guys said. Um, 
But I, I think this is one of the reasons why, like, Kaido, I, I think Oda, I'm not going to say Oda made a mistake, but I think that Oda definitely had Luffy chew off more than he can bite. He, and, and a lot of plot had to happen in order to beat Kaido, because even now, when you look at Luffy, he's not doing the things he was doing against Kaido. Yeah, he's yeah. Not. He didn't do Conqueror's coding advance form, not once. He hasn't really used Future Sight like that that we know of. Black Lightning's not coming off of his Gear 4 Snake Man punches. Mm -hmm. When we were seeing him fighting Kaido, Kaido in hybrid form, by the way, he was he was using base form, using everything. Yep. So it's like, why aren't you doing that now with just Gear 4? Because now Gear 4 Snake Man should be top tier. Yeah. If you could bang out with somebody like Kaido in hybrid form in your base form. That's where I, like, I'm starting to struggle with for Egghead. It's because I brought this up before with the Seraphims. That wasn't happening with the Seraphims mm -hmm. either. Or when we needed to find out where the Stella was, Luffy wouldn't even use Future Sight. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like Luffy's kind of being nerfed right now. The question is, is it Oda nerfing him or is Oda Luffy nerfing himself? Like, is there a reason? Could be That's too. the thing. Like, if, there, if there's a war. reason as to why he's not you, like, because it's never been said that utilizing Conqueror's hockey in that way exhaust you and something like it doesn't he's never really em expressed that in the chapters on onigashi yeah. that like mm. this is a, a negative like there's going to be some major drawback to doing that yeah so like why not just do it exactly so i don't know and i, don't know. I, I guess right now for me i'm kind of confused because I, I don't know why he's not using these uh abilities so um in my opinion let's start <laughs> you know kazaro's a bad dude man He's a bad dude. I think we expected this, you know, to be something like crazy. He's supposed to show out. He's yeah. an OG admiral, dog. There's yeah. one thing I want to say for all the people that were like, "Yo, Luffy's gonna low diff," because I come on, like, yeah, like we were happened. getting that, bro. Yeah, it's just like, weird. come on, bro. It's just weird. Gonna low diff what? Kazaru. Like Kazaru. Luffy was gonna beat because because there's one this one that's side great. that's like, "Yo, admirals over Yonko," and this other side that's like, "Yo, Yonko's well over admirals," and it's like, "Yo, they're just relative, bro." Yeah. Like, they're around the same... They, only people that can fight at that level are them. Yeah. You're right? So it's like... I just don't get it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I don't get why people thought that it would... Like, this is a dark boss right now. You're not just getting low diff by Luffy. Yeah. At least... not Especially not before Gear 5 pops out. So... Yeah. Anyway. But anyway... Uh, let's go to the next one. So Lilith tells everyone to run away. Vega Force uh, is about to explode. Kazaro looks at Bonnie and says how much she's grown. Kazaro asks her about hating him. And Bonnie replies she has a new target. Bonnie asks him, uh, attacks him, and Kazaro dips it and kicks her in the back of the head, sending her flying into the laser field behind them. Frankie goes to shoot his radical beam cannon, and all of a sudden, Kazaro is gone. Back at the control tower, Stella, Edison, and Atlas finally crack York's code. Stella wants to lower the barrier now, and Kazaro just shows up right behind him. He blew Vega Force to smithereens. Uh, hold on, my bad. Stella wants to lower the barrier now, and Kazaro shows up. Kazaro tells him his escape was a failure, and he blew the Vega Force to smithereens. Everyone is shocked and wonders how he got here. Kazaro says it's difficult for him and doesn't want to draw this out. Then Gear 5 Luffy busses through the building, grabs Kazaro and with one hand. Uh, everyone's eyes pop out from shock. Kazaro then says, there it is. This is the thing you do. Luffy then tells him he thought he was going to pass away from the barrier. Then the legendary Iron Giant's eyes light up and there's a heartbeat sound. And then we will start with Law. So this was actually the part I've been waiting for. <laughs> and honestly, I thought it was interesting. I'm low key, because I looked a little shook when he got grabbed by Gear 5 Luffy. <laughs> Just saying. Anyway, um, right. And Bonnie, I'll be crazy if this is how she like passed, because you know, from what Luffy said, they almost took him out. But anyway, I don't know how dangerous those are. But right here, I'm just going to the end because we don't have a lot of time. The 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 giant metal robot, whatever thing. Being awoken, right? It looked like being awakened by the drums of liberation, right? And I was like, oh my goodness. So I'm trying to think, like, because if we think about it, right? Going back to when Luffy first got to Gear 5th, right? And then when he gets knocked out of it, knowing again that Kaido beat Gear 5th Luffy, knocking him out of it, right? So this is a comment from earlier. Luffy says again, play that beat, mm -hmm. right? 
So that gives me an idea. So when I saw this, is the drums of liberation is what powers Gear Fifth, right? I'm not saying it is, but I'm thinking that's a theory I'm, I kind of thought of. Because like Luffy says, play that beat. So for him to be in Gear Fifth, the drums of liberation should be playing because he hears it, right? And Zo hear it. Now it's playing and it's showing right here, right above the robot. The robot's hearing it and you see the eyes lit up. And then they made me think of going back to what Vacapunk wanted. He wanted the energy that powered that robot. I was like, is it the drums of liberation? So I was trying to think about, you know, like sound or music being uh, like energy sources. And when I looked at it, I think it's kinetic energy. And then Vacapunk starts going into like energies all around us, right? Trying to find an energy source. What if this is the energy he's talking about? It's like kinetic energy that you could be used to to play music. But then I even started thinking anymore. I don't want to take up too much time. Is that what does this play a bigger role for Brooke? What if he learns how to play this song? Because he's a musician, you know. Can he control? Because you know he's able to control things or people with music and sound, right? Like feel them, make them even stronger, like make them aggressive, whatever. But what if Brooke is able to play the drums of revelation? Not saying he's going to control Luffy, but like what if? What if there's more expanded on this with that, what Brooke's able to do, you know? But I just thought, like, the energy source is being kinetic energy, and what if that is uh, all around? Because yeah, it would open a new avenue, because I know it's like, what, well, we're introducing something new, but then Vinkabo's kind of saying that there is something new already out there that was able to power this, the ancient energy that the kingdom was able to use. So then we have, like, you know, and I, I think that it goes even deeper into about how he said the fruits are even made. That actually came up with another theory of how th uh, the fruits are made or, like, their desires, right? And I don't have time to elaborate all of it, but there's an avenue out there of, like, um, to me, just to sum it up, for them to be wishing or desiring something new, there had to be an oppression out there already, mm -hmm. you know? So and that's in a way, you kind of think of that's how Nika either was formed or Nika came into existence or it came to, like, help people because... He had to be, he's, a, he's the God of liberation for a reason, you know? That means people already had to be repressed by something. And that's why I kind of feel like if that's a thing, and that kind of spawned uh, um, the, uh, the fruits in the first place, it kind of leads me to believe that the world government may have had a power source already. And that's also what makes Eam able to hold power. Because the reason I go into it is like um, it ties into like them knowing having immortal life, right? And that treasure that's that's hidden there that Doflamingo knows. Mm -hmm. I believe that's an energy source or a power source that Eam holds for himself that the Celestial Dragons had. But now since he's the only king that was eight hundred years ago, he's keeping it all to himself that no one else knows about it. But Doflamingo found out, right? But I think it might be a power source. But I think another power source they're introducing is kinetic energy, possibly with the drums of revelation the drums of liberation because it seems like it's powering either gear fifth and the uh the ancient robot all right uh lionel when you said that got me thinking so so you think somebody's playing the drums of liberation like right now while luffy's in gear fifth because like luffy turns into gear fifth on its own like from his ability but we just happen to hear the song so there's something like when Luffy taps into Gear Fifth, you're saying that's when somebody's playing, or somebody's on constantly playing it. No, so I'll reiterate. So this thing, pay that beat. Luffy's in a way what they showed. Luffy's heart is actually drumming the yeah, drum that's liberation. What I yeah, but I'm thinking is like, good. Go by playing it goes into like someone could possibly learn that melody or learn how to play it and activate Gear Fifth. Without Luffy's will, yeah, or uh, not, not really. Like, uh, no, not really acting. But I mean, to use it to like power something. Not okay. that's what I said. Not control Luffy because he's a conqueror. But the thing is, like, like I tied it to like Brooke, how he's able to control people or infuel people, inspire them, give them extra strength. Thing I go using the Judge of the Vision, him using that to empower people, like because they kind of showed that the um, go back what Vega Punk was saying. He's saying the Judge of the does something else. Mm -hmm. What? I keep saying it wrong. You just keep combining all the words. <laughs> yeah. Drums of liberation. Drums uh, of liberation is able to do something, and that's how Nika was formed. So I believe that um, the fruit or Nika, right? That's playing it on its own. Yeah. But I feel like someone could possibly learn that okay. that beat, that melody, and mm -hmm. play it to use it to empower others. Yeah. You know, and fuel as an energy source, like kinetic energy or something. 
And my other question, it was to you guys, because I actually don't remember. Did Momo hear the drums too? No. From what it, it said, no, it was only Zunisha. Oh, Zunisha heard it. Yeah. I don't so think Momo thing, heard it. How did Zunisha hear it? Because I saw thinking of the, like, you know, the voice of all things thing, but I already know that Momo has the voice of all things. But I'm not, I just put a question myself, how did Zunisha hear the drums? Obviously, it's obviously Luffy could hear it because that's his ability. But how did Zunisha hear it? That's the, that's the one thing I just started questioning. Like, because I know there are ties with, with um, Mika and stuff, but I you was know, just questioning like, the Joy Boy and stuff and like how, whatever. But um, that's an interesting uh, theory. Um, what you the kinetic energy thing? But but it just could just mean this robot is connected to Joy Boy or Nika, um, in the past. The fact that they woke up because they heard the drums shows that they, there is some connection to it and again they're going to elaborate more on the power source it could be that it could be something else we don't know but because we, we just know that two people reacted to it Zunisha and this thing so sure there's clear connection between the Jones of Liberation and Joe Boy Zunisha and this thing and apparently that goes into 800 years ago or 900 whatever so that's true so right there kind of has a big uh, impact on us hopefully we get to reveal it soon but I don't know. But this all kind of goes into what I was going to say before with Kizaru, that when I saw the Marines and um, the world government constantly clashing, like here, you said that he's a cold-hearted, um, like, you know, hitman with Kizaru. He, he is, but, again, he shows that he still doesn't want to do this, giving an order similar to Aokiji, giving orders to Marines that things that they don't want to do. Aokiji made the choice to, like, you know, not really do that anymore. Like, he did it with um, Jaguar de Sao, but he didn't finish him off. Because he that goes against what he believed in, because a kind of would do it, and he said, "I'm nothing like a kind of." Because I always shows that I'm still willing to do it, but it still hurts. Like a kind of shows, I don't know if he ever has. Um, like we I, we don't know if kind of ever been in that position where he is to attack someone he cares about. He knows we know Al Al Kiji was um, put in that position. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> um, because I know what you're thinking. Um, and pretty much, and um, and. Kazal right now, we don't know if Akainu ever did and how he would react. But, like, we saw Aokiji's, um, you know, his answer, and now we're seeing Kazal's. But that's something of they're constantly disagreeing with the world government. That's what I'm trying to think. I think maybe, I don't know, maybe there might be, like Luan said, a division where the Marines are going to leave the world government or the world government. I don't know, but there's, I think there's going to be a clash, like a fraction clash where they're they're not together anymore. Because it's constantly over the thing. But again, I don't know, because I kind of know the fleet admiral. And you also you have Kong, who's the chief commander, who's also the leader of the Marines, in a way. He's higher. So I don't know how they play in, because I don't know um, a kind, um, Kong's, like, you know, his thought process on this stuff. I don't think he's like a kind of. I don't know if he's like Sengoku. I have no idea. I don't really know his personality like that. or, but Because I can't see he's like a Garp. But... I don't know. I just, I'm just thinking of like you know the possible future of the Marines and leaving the world government. But yeah. All right, Sam. All right. So, um, in regards to the chapter itself, because Lawrence's theory was was interesting, really interesting about the kinetic energy. It's got me thinking now. My mind is like racing. But in regards to the chapter itself, I did love the little mini like interaction between Kazaro and Bonnie. I was curious as to who her new target is. That was like my yeah. biggest focus on that. Who is this person? Um, who could be high up in the in the Marines or whoever that made this decision because it's not Vegapunk. Um, I told the twins and Larry about a theory I'm cooking up. Like it might could be that <laughs> same person maybe, but uh, who knows? Uh, I'll have to drop that later. Um, Bonnie flying into the, the dome. I wasn't expecting all that. Yeah. Because uh, he was talking about I don't want to hurt more people that like I've, I know or whatever, right? And she's not like a major threat to him. Why are you kicking her into the... <laughs> yeah, like, Sa- Saul... I mean, or, or Saturn already said, like, we don't need to take out Bonnie. You, you can yeah. leave her alone. He didn't even need to do this. Yeah. He just kicked her that hard and she flew. You think you would kick Frankie before you kick her? Yeah. Ta- he's just talking, man. That's what it is. Listen, <laughs> that's what it is. <laughs> Hopefully she good. I'm sure she's fine. Um, I thought this was a bit of a miss. That Vegapunk and the, the other two just cracked the code like that off panel. Um, I thought, you know... O- Oda's, he could have got cerebral with it. Like, really entered the mind of Vegapunk and how they cracked the code. And maybe that would have been a little extra, but I kind of wanted to see it. Like, how how Vegapunk's mind operates. 
you know, just a little solo, a little, little something that in the beginning of the cha- of a chapter or something that dedicate that maybe that takes too much time. Obviously, there's more interesting stuff to do here, but I, I thought like it's a problem that's just a problem that just got solved in like a couple chapters. That it doesn't mean anything. It might as well have not have been a thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like who, who cares? Like who cares about this code <laughs> cracking if it's not gonna be anything that actually right. prevented anything, yeah. right? Yeah, that's true. So, like maybe I guess they didn't. They couldn't leave immediately, but like, cause ours was light speed. Like, you could have just got there and did this anyway. So, I don't know. I thought we could have got more out of that interaction. Um, it was interesting the way he was, cause Ar was speaking to Luffy, and the way he speaks later here. Is he not trying to clip Vegapunk? Is there some ulterior motive for him that he's trying to finesse and, and maybe protect Vegapunk without Luffy knowing? Because earlier, he's like, yo, like, why are you protecting him? And like, yo, stay out of it, right? More so than like, like, this isn't your place. It's like, yo, stay out of it. Obviously, I don't want to do this, but he's doing it anyway. But like, when he pulls up, he had multiple panels of sections where he could have easily just did some things. Yeah, he could have. And he starts talking about, yo, failure this and smithereens that, and this is difficult for me. If you bout that action and you like speed, handle business. Like, like, like Rob Lucci. So that's either like, is there is there some other element here that's at play where Kazaru's gonna like fake Vega Punk's passing, or that's his goal, or something like that? I don't know. Um, Luffy gianting it out and gear fitted and gra- yoking Kazaru up is amazing. On on Instagram after I read this chapter. I, I, I saw a, a meme video. It showed Luffy when he was like at Marine Ford, getting kicked by Kazaru, and then he gets grabbed up by Whitebeard, and they transitioned into this moment <laughs> where he's yoking Kazaru up. And I was like, "Damn, we really made it this far! Like, <laughs> it's lit, bro." I was just mad hyped. Kazaru's face—he does look a little worried. Uh, clearly, the scouting report is out on Luffy, so this is the thing you do. Like, this is the. White, the, what did what did uh, Vegapunk call it? The White Warrior or mm-hmm. whatever. Um, it's it's dope to see that they have that. I love to seeing the eyes pop out. And as far as the uh, the robot, I didn't have any great theories, but I like Lawrence's kinetic energy one. I do. As far as Brooke playing an instrument that could like playing the drums or whatever that could elevate that, I love it because you know me. Basically, every single One Piece fan wants Brooke to have more importance to the mm-hmm. story. I think, I don't know if y'all remember, I used to complain so much about, like, I love Robin, but I was like, yo, her, like, you don't need an archaeologist. Remember that? Like, my yeah. whole, like, you don't need an archaeologist to be a pirate crew. Yeah. And then it became something that you clearly needed. Damn, that's forever ago. You don't technically need a musician, but if it becomes something that Luffy actually needs to do what Lawrence is saying, maybe replicate the drums of liberation, activating these robots and activating some sort of powerful source that can help them, I would love that. It just increases the importance of Brooke in the crew and his his relevance in the story. I just hope to God this isn't another Zunisha situation where this dude like wakes up, gives us some some exposition or like moves the plot forward as far as like just saying words and then like falls asleep again or something. Like, bro, I'm gonna be tight. Also, Kuma need to become an exit. I don't know where you're going, but it needs to be here. So, wait, I'm gonna ask though. Can Brooke play a drum? Come on, bro. I know he's a musician, but can he play all instruments? I think so. Lionel, this is the Straw Hat crew, bro. Yes. They got the best at everything. Chopper didn't hear those people from one. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe you doubted Brooke, bro. That was crazy. Um, I do have one thing that I want to say. So, it's weird that Luffy went into Gear 5 versus Luchi. And the robot didn't wake up. Um, that's one thing I wanted to point out. It's true. Uh, don't know what that means. Um, I, I had a similar idea to what Lawrence was saying. Um, but mine just focuses on, like, the will itself. So I've said before that maybe the infinite energy source that or the ancient power that Vegapunk was wondering was actually just will itself. Like, because will is in everything. Even Mm -hmm. in the Japanese culture, they believe that everything has, like, a spirit inside of it. Like, the desk, the phones, Mm -hmm. all these things have voices in a a way. 
so for me, I was like, listen, the the person with the the most will, I think we're gonna see is Luffy. His special ability, stated by Mihawk during Marine Ford War, was that he has the ability to attract people to his side, and it fits the uh, the Nika fruit so well because when we see him in Gear Five, what happens to the areas around him? They take upon his will and they start being affected. And we, you know, we always see it with the eyes pop- popping out. So I'm saying to myself, like, most likely that robot is just powered by this energy source, which is will, because Luffy is able to just, you know, emit some type of willpower. So maybe that's why it's turned on. But the hole in that theory is, well, why didn't it turn on before when he went gear five against Luchi? Um, but it just makes sense to me that, you know, I think that's part of what you said is part of it, though. Mm-hmm. Like he can copy it. I just don't know if he'd be able to structure the energy source because it's not actual will. Right. It would have to take on Brooks' will, and then he would have to play the drums, and I don't know if that would be the same. True. So maybe I think it's the same theory though. Um, when it comes to Kuma, I think the robot that we're seeing, the legendary Iron Giant, is supposed to be parallel of what Kuma's mission is now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's very weird because the only other time the robot, the legendary giant, was active was 200 years ago during the Fishman Revolution. Uh Now, there's two ways this can go. Was there a Joy Boy during that time that was able to activate this robot? Or maybe there was a strong enough will with a desire behind it that activated the robot itself. Since it was during the 200 years ago with the Fishman Revolution, maybe the Fishman's collective will mm-hmm. and what was happening powered the robot, which would mean either way this went, the robot's powered by anarchy or like rebellion or like a desire to not be suppressed or a desire to like have something happen. Mm-hmm. So how does that tie into Kuma? Kuma's a revolutionary. His main job is to stop people from being oppressed and to uh, revolutionize against his oppressors, right? We've seen it as a child that he was a slave. So this fits that type of like category. For me, it's like every time we've seen Kuma, like in, I I have notes, it's like during chapter 1058, Dragon asks Kuma what he saw in Mary Jo. That was the first time Kuma was back after being saved from being a slave, right? Then we see in chapter 1067, Kuma runs away from the revolutionary after Shaka tells everyone they're going to oppose the government. Mm -hmm. To oppose the government, right? That would probably mean that maybe Kuma's also affected by this same type of will. But since Shaka wasn't able to replicate the, the energy source, he put it as a program that if they were to ever be attacked, then Kuma now has to do something mm-hmm. that we don't know what it is. But either way, it's still fueled off of uh, oppression. The same way this robot we're starting to see is fueled off oppression. So it's like the energy source itself is just rebel uh, rebellion or like mm-hmm. the will of a rebeller. And it's very interesting because the next time we see Kuma, right, he uses the pawpaw fruit to leave from Kamabaka Island. And then 1071, we see Kuma hit the red line. 1072, Kuma climbs the red line. And then we see what happens with Akainu. And now Akainu's like, yo, what are you doing? But during the chapter of like when Kuma was leaving Kamenbaka Island, I think it was when Vegapunk was talking about the soul leaving the body. That's the confusing part. Mm -hmm. It's like what happened during that time? Because he did have the pawpaw fruit. He had the ears. But it's like during that time, what did he take out of himself and leave the husk that's there? Is it just his instinctual will that's that's the residue of his being? And is it placed somewhere else? So I'm like confused now. I'm like, yo, I don't really know what this means. It's just something to think about. Yeah, y'all got me thinking, man. Y'all really got me thinking. And it all ties back into my theory, bro. Okay. <laughs> no, it doesn't. It does, Lionel. We're going to see. <laughs> okay. I don't know. But, you know, if a, if a Kainu's, like, not murking somebody from the get and he's asking questions, there's some type of, like, mm-hmm. 
there's some type of wonder. Like, I think everybody's wondering what happened with Kuma and what happened with Vegapunk. And the fact that Bonnie changed her objective makes me feel like Kuma not only saw something, but he knew of Eam, and he probably knew that the treasure that Doflamingo mentioned has something to do with what's going on. And maybe he became a slave or a robot because he felt his rebellious nature would just allow him to just attack. And he probably exited that out of his consciousness or exited his consciousness completely out of it because if he still had it, then he probably would have attacked Mary Joa. Mm -hmm. And they, and then he was probably like, yo, the best way I can infiltrate and and do what I have to do without in, like uh, rebelling against the Celestial Dragons, I'll become a slave, I'll become a weapon, I'll see what's there, and then I'll go report it back to Dragon. Mm -hmm. And then when they captured Kuma and rescued him and brought him back to Kamabaka Island, Dragon's first thing was, what did you see there? That always reminded me of the... King uh, King Neptune and Fisher Tiger. And now I'm getting more of those vibes from that moment. Because that was what King Neptune asked him. Like, what did you see? And he said humans. But, I don't know. It just... Kuma's interesting, man. We need to see that flashback. Yeah. We really do. We really do. It's going to be interesting. I think, I think the more... I think next chapter... Uh, you know, it's crazy. Because I didn't read this chapter until today. <laughs> um... <laughs> I think next chapter is going to be a good one, for sure. It's on break, right? No. I don't know. Oh, no, no, no. no. Oh, oh word? Yeah. Okay. Okay. How many breaks have been taking? It better not. Listen. All right. Uh, let's read Super Chats. We're going to take sponsorship break, and then we'll get to phone calls. Sorry, guys. Just yeah. you're going to have to deal with it. Yeah, we did get a $5 <laughs> from Char Jamelli, uh, or Jamil. Uh, it says, hashtag Alchi Alkiji gets too much love. That's, I feel like Alkiji dope. I, I feel like that's some that's some hating. Yeah, <laughs> like, I, I, I don't know why you hating it's for. It's pretty bro. accurately rated, man. We got another five from Red Hair Shank them. It says, first time in a long time. Keep speaking your truth, boys. Hashtag TOPT for life. Thank, Thank you, you Shank Thank them. You. It's been Thank a minute, you, man. man. First time in a long time. Let me stop. <laughs> uh, we got another two from Diamond Life. It says, I think S Bear gonna inherit Kuma's memories. Could be. Eh, mm -hmm. I don't know about that one. That'd be crazy. We got another uh, four for uh, not four a uh, four month membership to Nakama status from Juan Carlos. It says everybody in this chapter are Kainu victims. <laughs> uh, about all that, uh, we got another two from Brendan Miller. It says calls today. I got a saucy theory for you fellas. Um, we're gonna try our artist. We did get another ten from Victor Hate. It says I like the theory where ancient civil civilization that sound that used sounds to do make structures. In this world, the world in the world ah, in this world the before the void century, these items could have fought against Emu or hidden to stand against him. I struggled so much reading that I couldn't make it out what it was saying. My bad. Yeah, I don't I know why it? you long pause like yeah. that. I was trying to see if y'all understood it at all. No? Not really. No. Okay. Um, I'm gonna just bypass it, Victor. I'm sorry, but we appreciate the ten. Uh, we got another 2.8 from King SSD. It says, why Larry so quiet about this chapter? Hashtag Laudy Dilf. Um, I think Larry just trying to give us time to, to speak on things. Yeah. Because, Hi. yeah. But that's all soups. All right. Marv, let's hit sponsorship, and then we'll get on the full calls. This episode is sponsored by BetterHelp. Have you been struggling lately? Maybe having difficulty sleeping? Struggling with a relationship? Or suffering from low self-esteem? Listen, I've been there. We have been there. If so, then today's BetterHelp wants to help you. BetterHelp offers licensed therapists who are trained and here to help you out. Talk to your therapist in a private online environment at your own convenience. There's a broad range of expertise in BetterHelp's 20,000 therapist network that gives you access to help that may not be available in your area. You just fill out a questionnaire and it's as simple as that, guys, to help with your specific needs and then get you matched with a therapist under 48 hours. After that, you schedule a secure video or phone session. Plus, you can exchange unlimited messages, and everything you share is confidential. We signed up for different reasons, and to be honest, it's legit. It helped us out a ton. You can request a different therapist at any point with no additional charge anytime. Join the two plus million people who took charge of their mental health with an experienced BetterHelp therapist. 
This offer goes out to all our That One Piece Talk Nakama. You get 10% off your first month at BetterHelp.com slash T-O-P-T. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash T-O-P-T. Thanks to BetterHelp for sponsoring this episode. Welcome back. Hope. All right. Uh, <laughs> hope you guys enjoyed the remix. <laughs> uh, yeah, Marv, let's get into a phone call. Still that number up. Hey, stupid. The chat, the chat is hilarious. The chat is they said the Larry feature is crazy. <laughs> oh, man. Bro. My theory is going to be true, I got to break it down on stream. Hey, what's going on? This is Larry from That One Piece Talk. Who are you and how are you? Hey, guys, it's Broker. <laughs> hey, hey, Broker, Broker, what's up, man? Hey, what's up, Broker? I'm doing well. Yourself? Doing well, man. Doing well. Yeah, doing right. Excellent. I, I've got to say, I, I love your takes on the live action. <laughs> <laughs> someone, someone, someone is being honest. That's, that's all I ask. That's just honesty. Just honesty. Other YouTuber I've seen is saying it's like the second coming of Christ. They really are. <laughs> really? There's no one out there being objective. Nobody, apart from you guys, and I just really appreciate it. Oh, yeah, thank, thank you, you so good. much. Thank you. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, just, be, just I, I, I don't envy the hate mail you guys are gonna get. <laughs> but that, that's fine. It's fine. It's fine. You knew that when you got into showbiz. You knew this is the, pay, the price you pay. Yeah, man. Yeah, definitely is. We 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 bring the real. Right. You know, we bring the real. It, discussed this briefly in the past uh he knows that i prefer frankie fight burgess but i do like the idea of them recruiting york and the reasoning behind coming to egghead being getting a snake so i don't have much pushback i just prefer the macho man versus macho man versus the technology versus technology uh element of the fight so that's all i got yeah i don't have much man um, um i don't have anything i don't have any pushback no yeah the I th- reason i think as well is that talking purely end game sort of thing so final war the blackbeard pirates are going to need their own version of vegapunk to make it even because otherwise realistically if you've got one side that's got vegapunk as an asset and he can make loads of crazy technology he can make loads of green blood etc etc you need something on the other side of that and i think that's what york's going to provide i think in the same way we see kaido's grand fleet as such is all smile users i think by the end of the story blackbeard's grand fleet is going to have a bunch of green blood users like it's just the normal fodder characters are going to have loads of the same devil fruit hmm. just because again because it's a shonen we need there always has to be like a one-upmanship in terms of story and how else do you really outdo an entire crew with smile users you but by having an entire crew where a bunch of them have got the um uh the swim swim fruit and the um the blade blade fruit and stuff like that i think that's the way it's gonna go 
I would like that a lot. Um, the only pushback I have is, what about um, her wanting to become a special dragon? Like, is this... I, I think that's purely out of... Remember, she's part of Vegapunk's, like, um, his seven deadly sins. It's part of his personality. I think that part of her just wants to survive. I think she probably knew that because Vegapunk himself was researching the Void Century, that her, her life was forfeit, that all of theirs was, all the satellites, everything. So she just wants to live, and if she thinks Blackbeard can give her that, then she's 100% going to take it. Yeah. I, after survival. Yeah, I, I don't think there's... If, if these are the choices right now, like I have to survive and like Blackbeard's giving me an avenue while Luffy's here doing this and the government already betrayed the other Vegapunk... Like already betrayed me, even when I was trying yeah, to they, feed yeah, information. Her as well, yeah. She's gonna go whatever works best for her in the moment. Personally. Honestly, but. this made me think of like, and I don't want to even want to say it, kinda, but I just thought of, what if she does both? Like she put on comes with Blackbeard, and it comes as a dragon, and it helps Blackbeard become the thing he wanted to say at like Beehive. king of the world? No, not king of the world. Remember, oh, you, king, uh, just a king in general. Like the king sanctuary. that's under the world government in a way that's, you know, that's, I think paying t- the ties or whatever, making a, 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 an actual kingdom. But he said he wanted to be a Beehive. That's why he captured Kobe. And, you know, mm-hmm. and Kobe said, like, you wasted your capture on me. Like, for you to achieve that, they're not going to give it to you. And plus, you wasted it on me. I thought maybe that. Luffy would really have to fumble this for all that to take place, bro. Like, you'd have to really mess up. Which, I am mad at that. But I mean, I just thought, I'm not saying that's going to happen. I just, when you said your theory, Broker, I literally thought of that. That could lead, that leading to Blackbeard getting, you know, unfortunately what he wanted with uh, the kingdom thing. Not saying that Blackbeard always gets what he oh. wants, but like. Yeah, no, Black, Blackbeard will absolutely take every advantage he can get. And yeah. If he thinks having someone on his side in that position will benefit him, he's going to be all about it. I mean, all he really cares about, I think, I mean, the only reason to go to Egghead really after seeing the seraphim is because you want something from him and if he knows that vegapunk is likely the one that would build the seraphim and can therefore give devil fruits that already exist to someone else then he's going to do it absolutely he's going to do it he he knows that this is a surefire way of making himself and his grand fleet more powerful in the end yeah what's the better way to get all these devil fruits like hunt them down for these random people or Mm -hmm. just have somebody make them for me yeah. Yeah. So exactly. and Blackbeard gonna do the easiest thing. So Yeah. Yeah. I see it. But Broker, thank you so much for calling, man, as always. Always, always guys. Talk to you later. Right, you. Have a good much night, love, man. You too. Appreciate Peace. you, bro. Appreciate you. Bye. I like that one. Yeah, yeah, I did. Yeah. It was That's interesting. interesting. He has some pretty good theories. He does. Bullet, 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 bullet. Bullet, 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 bullet. Hey, what's going on? This is Larry from that One Piece talk. Who are you and how are you? Yo, it's Andrew. Hey. <laughs> yeah, you and Broker, bro. Yeah, back at it again. Yeah, what's up, Andrew? <laughs> Nothing much. Yeah, just I'll make this really quick. Yo, someone said, someone thought in the comments that like Lionel was wearing a do rag. <laughs> <laughs> what? It's, it's like, not a do rag. Nah, it's not a do rag. It's a, it's a, yeah. scully, it's a beanie. It's a beanie. Yeah, yeah, Remember yeah. beanie episode yeah. where y'all had beanies on? Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah. So for my question is just, what do you think is the, one of the most overrated fights in all of One Piece? This can just be any fight, and mm-hmm. this one that's just really overhyped it in the fan base. Such a good question. Oh question. man, most overhyped fight. <sighs> Dang, I really don't know. Because yeah, I, I, I genuinely enjoy most of them. So, is there a fight that I don't think is that great that gets like elevated beyond what it is? I don't know. Oh man, I'm thinking too. I wonder. This is a good question. You puzzled us. You really did. Uh, all right, so I, go ahead. Overhyped. Uh, off the top of my mind, over oh, just over recent events. Uh, Luffy versus Cracker. I think is kind of overhyped. Mm-hmm. Why? Because the way they're scaling Cracker. What you mean? Cause only because I believe what I've been hearing is that people believe that Cracker is stronger than No Flamingo, which off that fight. 
And I'm like, I don't, I don't see that. But that's not overrating the fight itself. Yeah. That's overrating, overrating an element of a of a character's ability, right? The yes. fight itself, I don't think anybody's like, yo, Luke versus Cracker is an amazing fight. It's like, like no, that's not in anybody's top five. I don't think. I, I've never heard anybody say that. Like that's their favorite fight in One Piece or anything like that. I got one. What's up? Sanji versus Virgo. So right, is, is, is it? Yeah, yeah. 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 Bro, people be people be like, yo, like Sanji was that dude, and like, but you, now you're doing the same thing that Lawrence was just doing. Yeah. <laughs> you know yeah. but I'm talking about but the it, fight, but it also yeah. wasn't a good fight. It was, it was a barely a fight. It was barely a fight. At all. Yeah, I mean, it was a scrimmage. Oh man, bro, I really don't have one. Yeah, bro. I don't have one either. I I want to say Luffy versus Katakuri, but not because I actually think it wasn't that great or anything. But like it was so plot heavy. Is is that and like people automatically just go, yo, it's better than Luffy versus Luffy. Mm. It's better than it's the Kaido versus Luffy could never top it. Like I've heard that, and I'm like, I love Luffy versus Kaido Curry, but I have Luffy versus Luffy over it, personally. You know what I'm saying? Like, I just I felt more. There was more emotion to me in Luffy versus Luffy. So. I don't know. I want, but I love Luffy versus Kata Curry. Like there was, it was a different kind of fight, which is why I loved it. Yeah. I don't know. I I really have nothing. I really have nothing. Bro. What about you, Andrew? What do you? Yeah. Have? What's your fight, bro? Yeah, I'm gonna get so much hate for this, but Zoro versus Mr. One. Oh my God! What? You're see your wallet. Yeah, you are, <laughs> you're bro. Wallet, bro. You are, bro. Oh my God! About, That's one of the best fights. What are you talking about? <laughs> Bro, what are you talking about, man? <laughs> Who let Andrew cook, bro? I think it's just like, again, it's just like, I always see like the top fights. I know like, the, you know, the comments are going to say like, hey, you're not a true one piece fan, but for me, it doesn't, like, when it comes to this fight, it, it's like, the, it's mainly just the final moment that really, that really gets to me. And then, it's like, when you see it, like, everything else beforehand, it's just kind of nothing. I don't know why. It just, it just doesn't feel like that impactful to me but again that's just my personal opinion yo i have a fight and and andrew's oh. rambling made me think of it um frankie versus senior pink the fight itself is mid as hell the fight itself is mid the story the background is amazing honestly but the I fight itself right. no, yeah, right. the fight more. itself is just like he's right it's mid more. bro yo, they were banging out yo but nah. it's not like well it's not amazingly choreographed it's not like overtly like emotional. Like it's just nah, you get to the right. backstory, you're like, oh, holy crap, this is epic. But like the fight itself, I saw it, I saw it on the anime not too long ago, and you you it gives off the person that you remember them like you know scrapping for real beforehand, but not as much as you would thought. Listen, if Sebastian gonna say that, I got one. Hit me, Zoro versus Mihawk. Oh man, see man. Nah. <laughs> the most overhyped oh, fight of oh, all time, man, and it literally bro. ended in like two shots. Well, yeah, it was supposed to though. Yo, but the the fact is that gets so overblown that they fought, and like that's a Mihawk like signature like win. Like, bro, I'm so done with that. Not it's all right for people who say that's a signature win. Yeah, tripping, because the most thing was just like Zoro thought he was closer to the top, and Mika was like brought him down, saying, "No, you weren't." <laughs> you know it's funny that that's actually my favorite fight of Zoro. <laughs> <laughs> Him getting packed up by me. I guess. Yep. That is crazy. Oh yeah, it, man. I just yeah, it's kind of like what you were all discussing. It's like the story is good. It's just the fight itself. We're going to what I said was um, Zoro versus Mister One. Story is good, but the fight is not that interesting to me. Mm. Yo, were they be acting like? I'm, I'm, they, I'm about they, to get banned, aren't I? <laughs> they be acting like Mihawk versus Zoro was well choreographed. Like they were, they were actually banging out. It's like, like the plot behind it was ago, amazing. Man. Like swordsmanship was really being shown. Like there was none of that. There was people, nothing. People love it for the story. It's not for the yeah. the choreography. They love it because so these two moment. fought. That's it. They literally saw it's each other and was like, yo, let's fight. That's character it. character moment of Zoro's journey. Yeah. But as a fight, it was weak. But the thing is, it was never supposed to, like, what, what do you want to happen? He's not going to be like, he's going to show Mihawk, oh, I could actually fight you. The reason why he used, he said, if I had anything smaller, 
I get all that. So it made, but it was still should have used the shmeet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the whole was like showing that like, <laughs> like it was supposed to such yeah, a it was supposed to be such an outclass that it made Zoro look like you know you're just literally I'm you just swinging your swords around to me. Damn, I had deja vu. I be having all the time. Like I just I was just here. I be having and like I, like I read the chat. I, I looked at you. I heard Andrew's voice. Like all that just happened. <laughs> I think I got one. I think I got one. That's crazy. You got one? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> Y'all make it quick, bro. What's up? Cat on Big Mom. We even see it, it, bro. <laughs> we even it. That's the point. Oh, if you want to say the rooftop, yo, low key. Yo, low key. <laughs> low key. Yo, low key. Everything that Blackbeard has been in it. Besides, <laughs> besides Ace. Fight. Besides the Ace fight. Everything else, yo, low key, overhyped, bro. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Nah, I, see, I see what you're talking about that too. Overhyped, bro. Every single one. Saji versus father. There's you judge. mean judge? You yeah, call him father? Yo, the father. question are you, are, you, are you a German? Yo, listen. They <laughs> said they he, he, the question said was overrated fights. Who is rating these fights, bro? Yeah, who has yeah. ever said yo Saji versus Judge was that? Sh-? Like who said that? You did. What? <laughs> <laughs> That's it. But. Andrew, much love to you, man. Thank you for calling out. We got to head out. Yeah, no problem, man. Also, the last thing I want to say, yo, Kizar is about to be a battery soon. <laughs> mm. Instead of yeah. a now, you y'all, right. <laughs> yeah, y'all have a good day, man. Yeah, yeah man. Have a good night, too, man. See you later. All right, guys. Uh, do we got any super chats? I believe we do. Uh, one second. Oh, yeah, we got one. It says, uh, from Terrence Matthews, $2. It says, we might get a Gear 5 version of Snake Man next. That'd be cool. Yeah. Just speed up version. If you can start doing different versions of Gear 5, yeah. that would be dope. Yeah. That would be crazy. Uh, everybody, uh, thank you so much for joining us on another episode of That One Piece Talk. Uh, if you haven't liked the video, please do. I want to get to like a thousand likes. Uh, I don't think I've seen it just yet. Um, it would help us greatly. Uh, you're a champ if you do so. Thank you for supporting us. Um, uh, if you haven't been in our Discord yet, Go to our Discord, join it, laugh with us, talk to us. Uh, you might at me and I might respond. Uh, depends if I'm busy or not. Um, also, you know, we have Spotify, we have Apple Podcasts, we're on all audio platforms. You can listen to us there as well if you're working or on the go. And I just want to say thank you to all the, the super chatters and the donators and the memberships that we're giving out and, you know, and for the phone calls. Unfortunately, you know, two hours uh does so much uh and we can't always have a ton of phone calls which we do want to hear from you guys so Mm -hmm. you know there's a bunch of people calling when that phone number comes up and marv can only do so much right so um thank you so much for always supporting us my name is larry lawrence lionel sam and this is that one piece talk